What's up, ZBrush friends? Thank you guys for waiting. Um, just getting started here, getting all my stuff loaded up. Um, looks like a few of you guys are already in here waiting. Give me a shout. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay before I get started. I'm going to drop you guys a message here. Nice. What's up, Brian? Thanks for giving me a check on that. That is good to know. I'm now three for, I don't know, maybe 15 now on good audio checks without having to fiddle. <laughs> I think I finally figured it out with this podcast, Mike. Um, okay, so to get started, I got a few hours, a couple. I'm going to try and maybe push it a little bit more than I normally do if you guys... Um, yeah, so this series, uh, I am trending. I actually um, came back to this. This ended up... I never completed it, basically. I kind of just moved on, and being a member of the development team, we don't, our scheduling can kind of be a little crazy. So I moved on to some other things, and since we've started in the last you know, couple months, myself and a few other developers have been streaming a lot more. So I wanted to go back to this project and complete it. So this is a, a series that I've been working on for, uh, cool. I mean, I did two streams building some assets here. I'm going to go to ZBrush Live real quick. Just to give you guys a rundown real quick of kind of where I'm at and where I'm trying to move towards. Um, if you find me in this presenters list. Did I pass myself? I think we added some more people. I'm now in a new place. Let's see. I don't know why. Am I missing this? Oh, well, that's fun. Well, maybe so there's something wrong. Or maybe I'm just, maybe my streams are becoming awful and they're just taking me off the list. I used to have a replay here. Maybe there's just something broken. Anyways, uh, I'll post that in the link. You should be able to find this stuff if you just search for, if you just do ZBrush Live YouTube, just put Solomon Blair. Uh, you'll find some of my older streams here. So, like, here's the mashup of the episode doing the character. Um, I did the Blade Runner pistol as well. Uh, yeah, so like here's the one doing the pistol, which is just basically like getting all the all the elements done of this particular series, right? Let's go about here. Yeah, okay. So I'm mocking up the Blade Runner pistol. So I basically got the character done and the, the, the weapon done, but I wanted to actually go through and do a full scene. So I'll show you guys like a quick mock-up of like I just I wanted to do a crossover of Luigi as gaff and then I might actually try and do on the side since it'll take too long if I try and stream it to do another uh, Mario as Harrison Ford's character and have sort of like an environment or a scene so I'm actually considering to go in here and uh, I want to build the vehicle which I started last the last stream and we're gonna move forward with that um, today so last stream if you guys didn't check that out I went through and I built the wheel um, just building the the, all the elements here in ZBrush using some Z modelers, some stuff that should be in the replays as well. And then uh, today I want to go through and just start to start to get the mock-up of just the primary shapes. Now I want to take this a lot further. Um, there's a lot of this is just the the very simplistic sort of shapes of everything that we sort of got started with last stream. Uh, but I want to go in and actually do some some more um, extra details. Right, so I was looking at George Hall, uh, did some concept work for 2049, which, you know, I know that I'm kind of breaking the, uh, the, the, the theme here, which is like, I want to do a classic Blade Runner, which Gaff is a classic Blade, Blade Runner character. However, I just like some of the stuff that's happening here. So I want to try and build some of these components in a stylized form. So simplify it a little bit. And uh, that's kind of where I want to take it today is go into those secondary shapes and start getting the, the thing sort of mocked up. And then we can start getting into the smaller stuff like the guns and the turrets and all that kind of stuff here. So uh, with that said, that's kind of what I'm working towards. I'll be using this as a reference point. So George Hall is a fantastic concept, concept artist who's got a, uh, some great work online that I found. And then I've also got like just the, the very old classic Blade runner -y style car too, which is a little bit more bubbly. Not like a super fan of this style, but it's cool. It's a good nostalgia piece. So I'll keep all this stuff in mind. And um, yeah, so uh, long story short to your question. Yeah, I'm kind of moving forward. I want to build the whole scene and I want to actually do the posing of all the characters. 
Uh, Vichar, hey, how you doing, man? I'll be, um, Vichar's going to be hosting a, uh, yeah, quick notes on ZBrush information before I get started as well. I'm going to go back to uh, the interwebs. If you go to uh, ZBrushCentral.com, On the main page there, you're going to see uh, we have these. I don't know if, if any of you guys have checked this out. We have ZBrush Masters. So we're doing a limited series of ZBrush Master live streams. We just did one this week with, with uh, Geo from Facebook. Uh, that was on the 14th. And if you go through, you'll check out the post. You'll see the, the schedule dates. So Vichar is actually going to be going on the 28th. Uh, I'm very fortunate and lucky to be hosting him. He'll be giving some information. Uh, very amazing ZBrush information that you don't get from many people. So these guys are all masters. Marcel is going to be going on the 21st. I'm also going to be hosting him. Or uh, he goes by Nilo. So uh, check those out and keep tabs on this. This is all going to be hosted on ZBrush Live. So uh, this is basically like mini ZBrush Summit stuff that you don't get really anywhere else. So definitely check that out. Thanks for tuning in, Vichar. I hope you're doing well, man. And... Um, uh, trending, you're saying you love the streams. Thanks for the, oh, dude. Thank you so much. Um, I, I appreciate that so much. It's uh, it really keeps me going because I, yeah, I never know. I getting feedback, you know, it might seem like overkill, but for me, it helps a lot. I, I try to put a lot into giving you guys information. I know that some of the stuff I show can be a, a wide range of beginner to advanced, uh, depending on you know where you're at in ZBrush and how you perceive this stuff. But I'm very happy to illustrate as much as I can. So. Um, Hopefully, I can do the same here today. Um, Saeed, you said, can I show you my new model here? Yeah, go ahead. Drop it in. I'd love to see it. I'm going to um, yeah, drop it in, and uh, I think it should pop up here. I may need to go in the Twitch viewer. Let me just do that real quick. I don't want to get too sidetracked, so I can actually do some ZBrush work for you guys. Let's go Pixelogic ZBrush, make sure I mute myself. That's the thing I want to do is hear myself talking. <laughs> yeah, if you drop that in over here, I should be able to see it. And if uh, I don't, I'll come back and check that here in a second. Give me a shot when you did drop it in there, Saeed. Um, okay, so last uh, bit of inf information before I get started, too. Um, you guys can follow me here. Uh, you can, I'd love to connect with you guys on Instagram, uh, follow your art accounts. This is my personal and my art. Uh, so give me a follow. I'll shoot you one back. And also, ZBC is, uh, if you aren't a member on ZBrush Central, uh, please join. It's a great If you're tuning into the live streams, you're going to get so much out of being on ZBrush Central. And uh, it's a great community forum. A lot of us at Pixelogic are now involved a lot more. We're communicating a lot with people. Uh, it's a great place to get answers to your questions post work. Uh, you can follow me there on uh, ZBC. My under name is just Solomon underscore Blair. So I'm slowly starting to update my gallery here. I got a new piece posted. This is an old piece, an old piece that I just posted again since uh, it didn't quite migrate over from the old ZBC. So I'm trying to get some of that stuff up there. So without any further ado, Dougie, what is up? Um, yes, Saeed, you said uh, you'd like to know, so I assume that you did post it. You know what, Saeed, if you have, uh, do you have Instagram or Zebra Central? Follow me on Insta and you can send it to me there. So if you just follow me here or um, go to ZBC and um, post it, you can, you know, there's a chat system, there's things that we can set up there. I think that'd be a good place to do it. So either one would be great. Um, okay, so then where I left off in the last uh, the last stream was about here. All right, so I got some of the elements built. We built the wheel. I started, uh, this was just a, like a mock-up piece with the Z modeler. Um, and now I really want to take this much further. So let me just go in and load my... I think I have just a, a build here that's I got a little bit more of this stuff. Back wheel topology, front wheel, wheels. All right, so yeah, starting to basically get into this phase. Oh, whoops, that's the... Actually, this isn't the one I want. Let me go back to subtool. Just to give you guys an idea of what I want to get to. And this will also keep me on track to uh, stay speedy and not get caught up in, in fiddling. All right, so basically all this stuff is basically hollowed out. I want to get to a point where I can actually hollow out the inside 
and then start to get to those renders where I can have transparency going through uh, and build all those inner components as well as all the stuff here in the front and a lot of stuff in the back. So to get to this point, let's see how long it's going to take. And then, as I said, I want to get to a lot more of those details. Um, Maherj, how are you? Point Pusher, what is up? Yes, my pleasure. Um, yeah, I, I will pass that along to all the Pixelogic folks. Um, thank you so much for the kind words, and we love to do it. So it's really no skin off of our backs. It's uh, This is like best part of my day. I have to go back to regular work after this, and it's never the same. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's always fun. So, uh, yeah, so I want to get to just like getting some clean shapes here, and I want to try and focus on some hard surface ish elements. So going back to the car here, I just used a lot of deformers and just Dynamesh to kind of shape this up. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, cleanup, trying to get some nice edge work. Now, one thing I like about this concept, again, this is George Hull. Um, I like some of the edging here. Like you get, if I just go in here with like a, a marker, you got like a hard edge that sort of travels here and goes up. I kind of like that shape right there. So I, I know that like the Luigi stylized world is going to be a lot of round sort of curves, but I want to try and get some of just a few of these edges in here to kind of capture like this one. I like that hard stepping. That's cool. Um, and I like that soft sort of slant going through. So I want to start to kind of hit all those like primary sort of shapes happening. All right. So to do that, um, I'm going to do so this is an old trick in my book. If you watch my streams, you probably see, do, see me do this stuff a lot, but to kind of get that first little <clears throat> edge work um, <clears throat> I want to I'm gonna check on you guys' comments here in a second um, I want to do just like a nice little like hard step and go up right and going in with like an H polish brush like if you do this stuff sculpturally um, you know going into like make sure spotlight projection is off you know what I spilled coffee on my ZBrush club and it's just wiping coffee on my screen it's great <laughs> um, okay, so like doing H polish and trying to go in and polish around, it's just no bueno. Not really going to work in a clean sort of manner. It would take a lot of uh, patience and focus that I just don't have right now. So what I'm going to do is a uh, little trick, holding control shift, going to sl the slice curve. So slice curve, what this does, if I solo this thing out, is I'm going to go turn off this front wheel block. I don't need any booleans for now. Um, I want to just create one clean hard cut line. So holding control shift with slice curve, if I go straight across, what this does, and I'm turning on polyframe here, what this does is it actually goes through and it creates a poly group at the slice, but it also creates one clean edge loop. So a little trick that I like to do here to get the edging to start working is if I go in here, one single edge isn't going to work, but let's just take a look at what this does. So I'm going to grab this poly group here, mask it off, not make a folder inverse that and let's turn on gizmo put this baby at the center and if i just go in and just kind of shrink this down i'm just changing the the space between this edge and this piece these two polygroups now if i go into deformation and this is what i like to do a lot is this polish by features i did this for uh, specifically i used this a ton in um oh gosh this was in my last stream which you can find on zbc uh, i made the mandalorian helmet and so i was actually making like a 3d printed sort of like statue unfortunately the covid stuff i lost access to the printer it was printing and so i won't be able to do it till i get back to the office but um i got the piece done and using that tech this same technique to get these curves all these like nice edge work a lot of people would want to do that with topology and you can absolutely um but if you want to just be able to work the forms and stay organic and in my opinion it's a lot quicker to do it in zbrush than it's going to be to build the topology for a piece so if i can get it to the end result faster i can retopo afterwards or ideally it's just zremesh it if it's a piece that's functional to do so so i always try to stay away from topology building as much as i can unless it's zmodeler of course if you watch my streams you know i love me some zmodeler but um, running this polish by features, what this does at those borders is it just sharpens that geometry at those curves and creates a nice harsh point. So using this system, I'm going to go back. And instead of doing one slice with a single poly group, I want to do what we call a B radius slice. So if you hold control shift with slice curve, that's this brush here, and then so control shift space bar you get b radius so brush radius what this does is it does the slice but it adds uh, a, a an edge loop 
technically a loop of a polygroups and this is going to be based on the draw size so if you just control shift push through it's going to basically do two edges and add three polygroups in total so basically what the b radius does is creates this additional strip in the middle with the polygroup so the if you want that to be bigger if you go bigger draw size control shift draw through you see that this next one is going to do a bigger strip so let's go i'm going to undo that i'm going to go draw size down to about 90. i'm going to do a strip about here so this is that part where the the side of the door meets the windshield 90 is almost there let's do about 104 maybe uh Mahertz, the is the stream on facebook let me Yes, it is. I'm actually getting, um, Rusty is commenting from Facebook and he said, nice job on the Mando helmet. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Um, that was a fun project. That's all documented. If you guys want to check it out, I'm going to paste this into the chat. You can go straight to it. And in here, I posted the links to the videos. So the replays of the whole, all streams, it was four parts to do it. Uh, those are all there. So anyways, getting back to this guy, um, I've got this little band here and I'm going to just grab this green group, mask it off inverse and just kind of go in and shrink the space between the green and the pink. So what will happen here is when I clear that mask, when I go through and polish, it's going to force all this blue stuff to go to the green. So the polish in order to really make this work, if you have this option closed, what that means is it keeps the mesh silhouette and the shell from shrinking. So it keeps it from shrinking. And as you keep just running this polish by features, it'll start to do the polishing. But what happens is that in order for it to keep the shrinking, it doesn't have enough strength. So when you open this up, it allows for shrinking of the entire shell, but it has a much stronger and immediate effect. And this correlates to the resolution of the mesh too. So if the mesh is too high, if it's like a million or something, it's not going to polish down very quickly at all. So anytime I'm doing stuff like this, um, what I might do here is Let's just undo. All right, actually, let's just see what happens. So open up the circle. If I do 100, it starts to polish out and boom, you get a nice clean edge. If you go further, it's going to keep polishing out more and more. So you start to get a nice, sweet looking little edge there. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back before I did that first polish and I'm going to add a couple more slices here. So I'm going to hold control shift and space bar and turn off B radius. Now I want to have a nice flat base here. So control shift drag across the bottom and that's going to add a nice slice and you may not be able to tell, but that is a different poly group. So it's giving me slightly different. You can control shift, click on it and then press control W to give it another solid group. So then that's going to, that's going to start flattening out this edge at the base. Um, and then also what I want to do is like just taking a look at, uh, like if I want to have a nice crease, you usually have a crease that travels along the side of the, the, where the side window meets the sort of moon roof and the windshield. So if I go in here with control shift, B radius is off. Um, sorry, I just noticed, um, Mr. Hanks, what is up? Um, Hey man, thanks for tuning back in. I, um, it's been forever. We never set up that lunch day. We got to do that. Uh, Mahertz, you're saying you didn't receive a notification. Sorry. Um, oh, yeah, you're saying for Facebook. Um, no worries. It is on Facebook, though, um, as far as I know, because Rusty Lip is responding from there. So if he can see it, I think you can, too. Um, so then I'm going to go to the floor grid. Let's turn on. I had an image on the up and down setup for that floor grid ref. I don't need that anymore. Now the slice curve, the reason why I want to see this is the slice curve, even though symmetry is on, it doesn't apply symmetrically. So I'm going to need to do a mirror and weld. So I'm just checking my X symmetry side here. I'm going to go control shift, tap alt. I think that's just, don't even need to check that X symmetry side always now, but it's a habit. So when I do that slice, what it does is it creates these poly groups here and it crosses over each one of these borders. So basically when this polygroup meets this one, when I polish, that's now going to become a hard edge. Um, Larry, the baseman, what's up? You said, I really think I'm learning something once you get started, but then it feels like I'm at a shout out party. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Let me get going. Let me get going. I got to stop uh, looking over at the chat just for a little bit. So I do a slice across this piece 
and that's creating those polygroups. Now I'm going to go geo and I want to do a mirror and weld. So I get that across both sides. Now, when I go to deformation and I run this polish by features, it's going to slowly, the more I go, it's going to slowly start to force these to be hard edges. So you can kind of speed up the workflow here or like the process. If you like, say you grab this group, mask it off inverse and you go in with like a, a move brush and you just start forcing say I don't want that to be as curved I want it to be a little bit straighter so this is where the in the Mando helmet it's very it was very forgiving for me um, I just kind of force that little section in the direction I want it to go um, even like if you grab this group mask it off inverse put gizmo here this is a little trick I like to do is uh, line it up with the uh, the world orient axis and then you can just click and drag the scale toggle towards the center of the gizmo to kind of start to flatten that out so then I just straightened out that front panel. Now when I go polish by features, all this stuff is going to start to correct itself to those lines. All right, so you start to get these shapes to go a little bit better. Oh, whoops, forgot about that. So those polygroups are actually sharing the same one. So I'm going to grab this one, press. If you haven't watched my streams, I do a couple hotkeys, auto groups. I have control shift P. So I'm just doing an auto group to separate that one. Let's mask that off and start to flatten that guy. We could even go back here and do the same for this one. And then let's go deformation, run that polish, and that'll start to realign back to that piece. And so pretty nice to be able to do this. Like if I don't want, you see this poly group has an edge. Let's say I don't want that edge anymore. If I grab this group, reverse, I'm going to go back to selection rectangle, reverse, hide this part. That's a long stroke, long strokes to get two poly groups together. A little trick you can do is just control shift click on a vertex point where they share the same vert, and then you can select both of them. And if you just simply press control W, you give that a new group. And if I go polish now, that's going to start correcting itself and that will no longer have that sharp edge. All right. So it's a pretty nice uh, way to kind of work. So I'm going to go back here and instead of, um, I like what's happening there with that edge, but <clears throat> these edges here at the corner, I don't necessarily want those. So I'm going to do this whole strip around here as a solid group. So control shift click on that one. Uh, let's get rid of, oh, actually. Somewhere in there, maybe I need to go back to before I reassign that. Yes, there we go. So then let's grab this, reverse, hide this, and then press Control W. So I just grouped all those parts together. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go run this polish. So I just run it up till, you know, maybe 100 or so. And that'll start to like polish out those edges. All right, so you can get. Um, a lot of like different sort of like looks and edge work here. Um, I don't know if I like that one as much. I think I'm going to go back to So I'm just trying to find the, the look that I like. I think I like the back to be rounded like it was. Don't want to clear if I read Dynamesh it will still work. Uh, if I go run and repolish, it works fine. But the slice curve, the benefit of keeping the slice curve is it already has a nice clean edge at the polygroup border. So that kind of helps to just keep that edge to be nice and pristine. Yeah, and that looks much better. All right, now another thing is like, okay, let's say I want to just slightly modify, like we can mask this part off. Yeah, Brian, you're saying, uh, do you recommend using zero mesher along with polish? Um, no. So like when you're working with this feature, zero, the zero mesh topology, uh, it'll work just fine. But if, you, if you're dealing with subdivisions, especially you're, this feature is really, you're sort of like reworking the shape all the time. So I recommend this to be used with Dynamesh and to try and stay about 150,000 in lower. The lower resolution it is, the stronger those heart, those polishing effects are going to hit each one of those edges. So if I were to take this below 100,000 and I run that polish, probably up to 100, it would probably do it all in one process. Uh, if you do it at higher, you'll see I keep kind of running it a few times. And that's just because I'm at uh, that higher sort of resolution. So what I would do here, though, 
though is like I don't necessarily love all these perfectly sharp hard edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, once I've got this thing in a pretty good looking shape right now, um, let's go in here and I'm going to maybe go like let me take this bottom piece, group that together. I'm going to mask that off. No blur, let's just inverse, pull this down a little bit. And then I want this bottom to be flat. So if I go in, let's turn floor grid off. If I run this polish by features, it will start to flatten out. But a little trick you can do that I like to kind of like, if I'm gonna flatten out that piece better, hold control shift, go to clip curve, and let's just force that to flatten better. So it's just getting it closer to where it needs to go. And then you just run that polish and it'll tighten up that edge. So I got a nice clean little base there. Now. Everything else, like I want to just soften up these curves again. I don't want it to be too CG. I could keep going with this stuff and add more stuff to it. But, uh, and like in the Mando helmet, it was a lot more edge work and polishing to kind of get those shapes right. But this looks good. I just want to soften up those curves. So what I like to do here is go up to a resolution of Dynamesh that's going to maybe close to like a million. Because um, I want to do a smooth effect, but a, the... The higher the resolution, the less it will reduce the softness of those edges. All right, so if I go up to say a thousand, oops, not a hundred, let's do one K and redynamish. I'm resurfacing it, now that we've got these edges, I'm resurfacing it enough where the dynamish is gonna keep the majority of that hard edge. So we'll let that thing go. Um, Dougie's calling out the uh, the control shift click shared with Vertex to both poly groups that are awesome. Nice. Um, well, then I'm, I'm glad to share that stuff. I know those little things like those things I know if you aren't living on our documentation pages and watching every version update with all the things changed, you can miss stuff. And that happens with every program. So that is a big purpose of these live streams for sure. So I'm glad to share that stuff. And I'm sorry for those of you guys that have heard me share that tip too many times. I don't know if I have or not. Maybe I have. All right. So I just dynamish. Oh, that's 6 million. Hey, yo, that's a little bit too much. So 1000, let's go maybe like 300. If one thing you may not know with dynamesh is it, that resolution number, if you, if say I have this mesh at a thousand and I have a completely different model, say this model at a thousand, I might get completely different active point count numbers. And that mainly, it's mainly because uh, Dynamesh is also calculated based on scale. So the bigger the object is, um, the higher the resolution will go. So um, in this case, if it's a lot smaller, that resolution might be too low. So it all depends on the physical scale that you'll see in relationship to that unified world space. So when you click deformation, unify, most objects, if they're all unified, they should be about the same. But it also, Dynamesh is also calculated by volume of the surface too. So that plays a part as well. So going into Dynamesh at say 300. I don't, there we go, a couple million. Let's see what that does. All right, so I'm just remeshing it and it's it's not preserving that edge perfectly, which is fine because I want to get rid of it a little bit anyways. And in my opinion, the best smooth effect, the global smooth effect in ZBrush is the, the smooth all deformer. Uh, do, I've talked about this a couple times on my previous streams, especially because I'm using this feature more. If you run Polish, what Polish will do, this res will take a little bit longer, number one. Oh, I should have been aware of that. It'll be fine. It just might take a second. Um, while it's going, what I'll say is the polish has a different effect, especially at edges, edge borders, where it kind of, you see, you get this little rounded out, um, little rounded out edge where it kind of inflates the edges. So this can be, I like to use this for certain things. It's a great feature. It has nice, clean, it like at least defines those edges. But if I just want a global smooth, if I undo that, just holding shift, that goes through and it just actually shrinks the edge and softens it up completely. So uh, that kind of smooth, it's gonna be impossible to go through and hold the shift key and go across to make this even. And that would be even just me doing that now, you can see it doesn't look too good. So to do that globally, if I go to gizmo, to make sure symmetry is off for this to work, turn on the gizmo setting and then click smooth all. And by default, it's gonna go, it has a maximum, I think of 
was it like I forget what the actual the max value is, but it does a, a certain small percentage. So it does it at 37 by default. You can click this and take it further. And as you keep going, it'll just kind of keep smoothing that out. If if you're dealing with higher resolutions, be careful with this. If you just click and drag all the way to max, it might take 30 seconds or so to complete. Um, so when you click it, drag it slowly, and you'll you'll get a much better result. Going too fast, it'll be fine. It just would take a minute to calculate. So then I'm going to click accept, and then I could go in. So you have to accept these deformers, by the way. When you uh, preview it, this is the preview setting. You can see what it's going to look like. And then when you're done, like I'll go through and I'll do that. Click Gizmo. You can reset it. You can delete it, which will take it off. Or click accept, which it actually goes through and applies. So I just kind of like softened up those curves. And now I got um, some good, at least soft shapes here that will then be covered up by additional panels and details. All right. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to actually go in and create. Um, this is, again, going back to the concept work from George Hull which I like this, the, these panels are kind of like connected inside here or like sort of like those arms could potentially open up or do other things. And there's also some space for some mechanical engine components or just techie kind of stuff. So again, this is a crossover between, um, you know, Super Mario World and Blade Runner. So I got to figure out how to make that stylized enough and like combine with some of the Luigi cart elements. Like I might want to put some of those little exhaust uh, pipes going off on this one maybe might, might be kind of cool um, but for now I just want to open up some space so a little trick that I like to do for this uh, doing an inner extrusion when you're dealing with Dynamesh when you're dealing with Dynamesh you don't get to do the same kind of stuff that you do with Z-Remesher and Z-Modeler polygon modeling just grabbing polygons and extruding so to do this the best feature for this in ZBrush in my opinion is uh, use it all the time uh, the panel loops feature so I'm going to mask off this front panel I'm going to control, actually, in order to do this, now that I just went up enough in enough resolution here, like I'm going to redynamesh this at the same res to kind of polish up some of these little edges here. And then let's go, I'm going to take this thing, go down in res for the panel loop process. So with Dynamesh, I'm never like, when I'm using this kind of workflow, I can go up, I can go down. If I go down, some of the quality the resolution will be reduced, but the edge, the frame of that edge should still be there. So you could even do turn project on and go down in low res. So what it'll do is it'll reduce the active point count, but it will try and project those details back into this mesh. So it should keep the majority of that shell. And now we're down to, you know, 400K. I'm going to go down to maybe like 100. I'm going to smooth the mesh a little bit to make sure it's active. Stefano Vigo, hello. Thanks for tuning in, man. What's going on? So I just went down to I'm under 300,000. So I want to go in lower resolutions because it'll help this process be, it helps just help it uh, react quicker. The more points you're dealing with all the time, the longer stuff takes. So, and also mainly what I want to be able to do is grab a mask of something and control click to get a nice soft blur. If you're at too high res at a million, that blur is going to take forever to shrink. And I would just want to go in, shrink it, and get control click to blur, control alt click to sharpen. I want to get like a nice little sort of like rounded out edge. All right, so then taking this piece, I'm going to go press control W to give it a poly group. And then if I grab this poly group, I want this to be an extrusion that shoots inwards. And I might want to have it have some details too. So if I click control shift click on the poly group to isolate, go to edge loop. And if we go into panel loops, what we want to set up here is we want to do an inner extrusion. So we have to, by default, you might have double side on. We want this to be off. Uh, we want to choose the inner option. And then the thickness is going to define how much gets pushed in. So I, I might have done this on this model before. 0.4. Um, let's just go in and click panel loops. 0.4, that's how far it goes in. If you don't like it, you press undo. And let's say we'll go to like 0.6. And then go boom. And that'll push that thing in even further. So just enough to kind of like... I want this to be able to sit inside, and I want to be able to put some stuff in there too. All right, so a simple back and forth with the thickness. And then once you get the, the result, so I'll do it one more time from scratch, run it. Once you get the result, what it does is it leaves an unmasked portion around that new area that you've built. And the benefit to this is, what I like if I clear this mask, I'm going to use that Polish by Features to clean up all those edge, that edge work. 
So if I do polish by features, you go boom. That's gonna start smoothing this out, but it also will go back and smooth out all those remaining polygrip borders from before. I like to keep these just in case I wanna do stuff with those again. But in this case, I don't wanna polish out all those edges, I just wanna do this one. So as soon as you do that panel loop, you get this little section that I'm now gonna go in to that deformation and let's just run, whoops, polish it, max 100. I'm gonna do a max 100 a couple times. And now I'm starting to get a nice clean little shape there. All right, so that's polishing out those borders. Now you can keep going, of course, like um, in this case, I might wanna mask off this part too. And then I'm just gonna go polish out that inner shape there. Now, another little trick is like, you see as I keep polishing, these guys are rounding out. So let's actually go back here before we did any polishing. And I'm gonna reselect these meshes, these, um, uh, these polygrips. Uh, Karubi, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, how's it going? Are you saying that that looks good? He's like, good, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, so these polygrips here, I just wanna isolate these guys out. And uh, I'm gonna make these a solid group. So press Control W. So this is that little trick, grab the vertex point on both of those. Basically what Panda Loops does is if you go into those settings, the number of loops here, you see we got one, two, three, four, five. This is generated by this number. So it depends on how many edge loops you wanna have in here. In this case, I'm gonna press Control W and it, each loop, it basically gives alternating polygroups for added benefits, added effects. So assigning a polygroup to this whole thing, I'm gonna do some sharp corners with the polishing for this as well. So I'm gonna go in, this is another little trick with the selection lasso. If you have an edge loop here and you want to hide it, as long as another part of the mesh, actually it doesn't matter if another part's hidden. Um, if you control shift click on an edge loop between two vertex points, it's going to hide that loop. So I'm going to separate at each corner one loop. And I've got symmetry on, so that's, that's disconnected this shell at those corners. And then I'm going to go to polygroups, I'm going to do auto group. So that's gonna give me unique polygraphs at each one. When I control shift click to bring everything back, the only thing I need to change here is that one separate piece that I hid needs to be reassigned to one of these groups. So I wanna have four unique groups. So I'm gonna go control shift click on purple and green. Let's do control W. And actually, the let's reverse that. The auto groups gives the each, even though it's symmetrical, each side gets, if it's a separate shell, it automatically is gonna get its own group. It's, uh, Auto groups does not symmetrically assign unique polygroups in the symmetry axes. So I gotta hide this one and then I'm gonna assign these together. So hopefully that makes sense. So I just connected those extra little pieces to one of these groups. Now I'm gonna grab this piece, hide, show, and grab this piece. And then, let's, oops, reverse, let's do that one and that one. And then mask this stuff off in inverse. So now what'll happen is at those borders, if I go deformation, polish by features, that thing's gonna start to sh create a nice square sort of edge. Now the only problem that I'm running into here is you see that this little border here as I start polishing, it's, um, yeah, thank you, Karubi. Um, I appreciate that. I'm very glad to. So the, the points here start to harden out but this is creating one hard point here that eventually what happens is this one's going to be shrinking because we have this circle open you see the shrinking starts to go through and that becomes more of a problem so to offset that what i'm going to do is assign this yellow group to this one press Control w and then we can start polishing and that should do a much better job all right so then all i got to do now is and even if you want to uh speed this up we can grab mask this stuff off inverse Alt click with gizmo. Now when you're doing scaling, like I wanna do this little trick when I flatten it, but when you have two gizmos on two sides, it looks at, it goes from the two sides and looks at the world center and they're scaling towards that world center or away from that world center. So if I wanna scale these in their positions, if I turn the local symmetry on, it's using the local symmetry of the gizmo itself. So then now I can go ahead and I can kind of flatten this out. And then I'm gonna grab this one, mask it, inverse, Alt click, make sure I refresh with Alt click on the reset, and then click and drag this down. So if you're not seeing what's happening, this is just an old vertex point trick from the old days, but I still do it. 
click and drag a scale toggle towards the center and you can flatten the object to, so you're flattening it basically to the green symmetry line, that Y symmetry axis. And then it flattens like so. And then let's just grab this one. So I'm just trying to tidy this up so the polishing doesn't have to take. This to me helps reduce the amount of times I have to polish to get these things to look uh, like nice and even. And then I can just use polish to kind of tidy up that surface. Whoops. Before I do that though, let's grab the polygroups. Control click. I just want to do it within this space. There we go. Then we can go polish that up. All right. So now we get a nice little bevel there. So then little tricks that we can do here, even if you, um, like let's say we want to go in and do some extra. Oh, actually, one thing that I liked before, if I go back here. Sorry, one, and I'm just going to leave it. That's going to have to be what it is. I was thinking I wanted to do like a nice little bevel in here, uh, which if I would have kept that single edge, I could have done a nice bevel at this edge loop, um, and it would have been able to do it. Now, if we go to Z Modeler here and we do a little edge, bevel, edge loop. We can kind of bring this back. Yeah, so let's try this. I'll go here, click and drag. Okay, now here's a little trick is where if I want this to start polishing out a little bit better if I give this thing its own poly group so basically following the same flow as this panel here has its own group at the same edge marker this top panel should have the same so hopefully this will make sense when I do it um, we can go in here and do poly group poly group with so I'm using Z model the brush the Z model the brush here and then go to the poly action hold spacebar, go to poly group and click a single poly. Now, if I hold alt and I paint all these faces, and just keep, whoops, let's go all the way. So you can see when you have a lot of edges like this, this would be a way to do it. Let's just end this here. But once I hold alt and paint the faces, if I just click on them now, it's gonna assign a new group. But that to me is going to take too much time. This is one of those things where I choose, I pick and choose my battles or when. See, so model is great when you have less faces to select. But I'm going to go to selection uh, rectangle real quick. And that's click on the yellow group and then hide just so we can isolate out this yellow group. And I like to use the lasso for this. Uh, let's disconnect this face here. That one looks good. And then let's disconnect this face here. And then let's do auto group. So give those uniques. And then now I'm just going to go control shift click on this. Get rid of that one. This actually, I'm going to manually remove that piece. Press control W. And then control shift click on this. Get rid of the green. Press control W. Oops, that one should be with this as well. So you see some of these guys are sharing the same groups. So now I have to go just kind of manually deselect and then control W to give that it's, oh no. Interesting. Well then let's get rid of this guy and do poly group, auto group for this piece. So now this one has its own shell or its own poly group and I can group that together. There we go. And then last but not least, do this one, group it. Okay, so now that those are sharing, or they have unique polygroups at those borders, these ones look the same, but they are different. We can go in, run this polish, and you'll get like a nice little sort of like bevel happening in that shape. And then we could even go in and do like, oh, interesting, what happened with that piece? Group that. And even if we go in with like selection, I'm going to grab Z modeler here. Let's just say I want to get rid of these extra edge loops and just go boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to grab 
this, press Control X to grow out. So this is a little visibility trick. You grab one group, and since this is a single edge loop, all I need to do is it's just visibility grow. So it grows the shell to the next remaining and uh, the next connecting edge. And I can mask this off. Alt click to put gizmo here at the center and kind of just go kind of scale that in. And then we could go to deformation and run this little polish by features and kind of whoops. Just want to reassign my mask. Uh, this guy, that should have its own group. Could have sworn those did. I might have deleted that with the uh, the old poly group. Little thing I could try is let's do grow visibility and see if we can do, this is something you do get if it has, if they're sharing enough of the same angle. If you go to poly groups, group by normals, that should give us, there we go. That gives us a unique poly group for each one of those faces. Group by normals is a nice little trick. And then now I can go through and polish that up. So I'll grow this out, mask it, polish by features. Um, and there you go. So you're starting to get just like a little extra sort of like panel detail. All right. So I'll move on from that, but I just wanted to, not absolutely necessary, but you get a nice little like lip and detail. And, oh, whoops, looks like I got a force quit. So let's let that save and I'll answer some questions while I'm reloading. Uh, Karubi, you're saying, what do you think about working with 3ds Max? Is it not much easier with Gozi? Um, working with 3ds Max is fine. Um, it is a great program. It's been around for a long time. Um, it's we we do have. I forget if we are still supporting um, Gozi. Gozi to Max. I think we are, but uh, let me see. If I go docs.pixelogic.com, go to go Z. Um, let's do this about go Z. Yeah, so here you go. Currently supports, yeah, so Max, Maya, uh, Cinema 40, Adobe, Photoshop, and Sculptors, of course. Um, oh, that's that's actually old. Sculptors is um, the... It's standalone program, but um, yeah, so Max is great. I mean, it's absolutely, it's supported. So I would say absolutely, if you're looking for a program to use, I don't know, do you, have you used Max before? Or are you just getting started? Max has a lot of features. It's been around for so long. Uh, Natalie Daniels, you're watching with your eight-year-old son in Texas. What's up? I appreciate that. Go Longhorns. <laughs> oh yeah, hopefully you guys are... Um, Hopefully this is entertaining enough then. I know. Is he, uh, I'm wondering if he's, if he's actually using ZBrush. If so, that's really awesome. Um, okay, so a uh, quick question from David S. Uh, how do you turn polygroup selections into masks? Oh, good question. Um, so all I do is the masking button here. If you go into masking, there's a mask all, which is control A. So if you control shift click on a group, just press control a and then control shift click to bring everything back you get a nice little mask group now cool little trick uh to do it quicker um little zbrush tip for you is if you turn on gizmo and you just alt or control click on a poly group you see you get a poly group uh, selection so if you clear the mask control click here you get a selection here and then clear it control click boom and then you can switch back so like that's a pretty pro tip there but if you like for me, when I turn on Gizmo, I just, I, going back to the old days of move, scale, and rotate transpose, that was W, E, and R keys, turn those on. So I always turn Gizmo on with W, and then Q goes back to draw mode for sculpting. So you just hit W real quick, control click, clear it, you know, or use it. Um, you can also hold control and drag along a surface, which will draw a mask down the, the surface itself, which is a really great, it's an older function that was actually, uh, that function exists with this transpose tool uh, way back in the day, but it still exists with Gizmo. So control drag will draw a mask down a mesh, which is a really cool feature for, um, for posing. 
So like if you go to like, like I'll take a look at the character here. All right. So this guy, in order to like get him into like a posed state, just say we go like no paint here. Um, if I wanted to do like even just like his little like hair tassels, if you go to like a little chunky, like you want to just pose that part where it's like kind of flowing out or something. If you just turn symmetry off, turn on gizmo, control drag, and I can start dragging down the surface and I get a nice clean mask that I can then just go readjust and use this to kind of go or control click, of course, to soften up that blur. But it what it's doing is angling the gizmo in the direction you want to be posing it. And then it also draws that mask for you, which is a nice little trick. And you can do stuff like this. So that's kind of what that's for. <laughs> You're giving me a trip to Tunisia? That's amazing. All right. When are we going? Send me the send me the ticket. I'm I'm starting to lose my mind cooped up in this apartment in Los Angeles. So uh I need uh, some new scenery. <laughs> Haven't had a haircut in over a month. It's really great. I love it. So going back to this piece here, I just want to start fitting this in a little bit more. So I'm going to move these guys. Maybe actually, you know what? I like the position of where these are, although I could turn on transpose all. I want to just move these three components. Um, this basically, the transpose all option, if I'm going to move the wheel, because if you just take a look real quick, I got the wheel wells are separate. The wheel it's se is separate and this piece is separate and I want to move them together. So, um, it's not anything special, but turning on transpose all, if you control shift click, that selects one part. Control shift click, it adds this to the selection and then control shift click on the wheel. And now we're grabbing three sub tools in the, the tree. And now I can kind of move these in just a little bit. So I'm kind of just, I wanna make sure those are inside. When you're done, make sure you turn transpose all off. Otherwise, if you leave it on, let's say if you control shift drag, that clears all selected parts. And when this option is on, it moves all parts together, which is not what I want. I want to leave this stuff at the center world axis. So you got to make sure you turn that off. Um, yeah, you got a nice beach. <laughs> Sign me up. That sounds great. So I might want to go through. I'm just going to do a little adjusting. Mask this off. Inverse use gizmo to just kind of bring this up and then I might actually want to modify the car here to go just a little bit wider out so stuff like this I did this in the last stream um, I like to if I just want to like edit the curve here of this whole piece I'm gonna turn on gizmo I'm gonna go in make sure symmetry is off so press the X key you'll see my uh, custom UI has the symmetry button down here so when I press X it turns on and off and then I'm going to go into gear and then click deformer. So if I go into deformer, I can click on these cones here to add new edge loops along the axis. So like if I, the more edges we have, the more finer controls. So if we just, uh, let's just edit what we have here. So control drag clears the selected points. Control alt drag over these points will grab all the vertex points on this cage. So you see I'm kind of just viewing it from the top of the model. So control drag clears, control alt selects it. So then if I go in here and I just start scaling this, I can basically manipulate and edit the shape. Now, if I wanted to edit the space between this, if I just go add, click and drag down, so I'm dragging away from the center. So out adds more edges, in reduces. So you can go and add a couple more edges along that space. And now I could kind of go uh, select this. So a couple tips with this, control alt go over the, uh, Control Alt basically draws the mask little rectangle. When you go over it without holding Alt, you see if I go over these points, it selects everything else but these parts. If I control click, it inverses the current selection. So it goes from here to here. So when you start from scratch, if you want to actually select something, you press Control and Alt, and that'll go through and select the box. Now, if you just control click on a point, so we can go through, or sorry, Alt click. Alt click will select individuals. Alt shift click will add multiple points to your selection and then control drag to clear. So just a couple little things there to, to make selections. But if I just, I like to do just large global changes here. So I can kind of go in here and slightly modify that curve, go through and grab this one, slightly modify that curve, or I can go in and just grab this whole chunk here and just kind of start to edit that. So little things you can do. Now I'm going to go back. I like to do the more edges, the more you start to run into stuff like this, where you get little wonky lines. 
the, mo the less of these edges that we allow for the deformer to have, the cleaner the shape is going to be. So I'm going to keep this down pretty low, about maybe here. That looks pretty good. So then control alt let's grab this and I'm just going to go in here and start to scale that out so I can fit that space in there. That looks pretty good. Um, okay, so there we go. And that's, I think that's about all I want to do. Um, last but not least though, let's take transpose all a little trick also with transpose all control shift drag clears the selection if you just control shift and drag the rectangle over a whole chunk this way you don't have to click on any parts it just grabs anything within that space so I'm gonna bring this um, down so that top part isn't hitting it clear it turn that off and I'm gonna grab just these pieces by themselves which, by the way, if you, I don't know, this is just little stuff here, but the solo button I like to use a lot. I don't want to go turn my sub tools on and off uh, constantly. So I assign a hotkey to solo, which is Control Shift S. So I just, to do it, I hold Control Alt, click on a point, and then you'll see in the top left of the interface it says press any key combo, and I do Control Shift S for me. So now when I press that, I always got my hands on that corner of the keyboard. So I find that to be pretty nice to have access to, so I can just solo this out of look at it and then toggle the visibility on and off all the time and now that stuff looks like it fits in there uh, correctly and that looks pretty good okay so now uh, what I want to do is uh, let's see let's do a little Z modeler editing you'll notice in this little tree here I have this little cube and then the last video I set up with live booleans just using that cube to subtract out from this piece however when I go through and if I just make that Boolean mesh here, just say we turn everything off and we go to Boolean, make Boolean mesh, the piece that we get now, it's going to basically triangulate in that space. So if I ever wanted to do any Z modeling on top of that, I'm not going to have the ability to do it anymore if I were to go forward with live Booleaning, Booleaning this part. So one thing to consider with Booleans is if you're an experienced modeler, Booleans are awesome. You can make so many things with Booleans, but um, like a good example is like, um, this is one I always bring up. This is like a lot of a lot of booleans basically the whole piece oh geez where'd it go yeah like this whole watch um, this is all in my ZBC thread uh, posting there's a whole tutorial on how I did this but all this stuff is like boolean mostly boolean work ba making a base model with Z modeler and just booleaning the heck out of the surfaces which is great but then you can't do any other edge work with the Z modeler brush so it's awesome in some situations but I always like to keep leave myself a little bit of time uh, or leave myself the ability to go through and make edits to that surface. So that would be like, you know, if I wanted to go into this surface here and go to edge, bevel, do a nice clean edge loop bevel here, right? To do stuff like that. If I break that edge loop with a Boolean, I'm not going to be able to. So for this part, instead of doing this little cube subtract, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, just get rid of that cube. And actually, I'm just going to, I want this to just kind of show the, since this is a little bit of like a hybrid between the uh, Blade Runner world. Oops, let's go back to my spotlight here. Crank up that opacity. Yeah, so like that, the crossover, I want the wheel, basically the, the car, the sci-fi car doesn't really show those wheels so I want this to basically have like a little cutout to just signify that the wheels exist otherwise they're gonna be kind of consumed with that space so if I go in here I'm gonna do insert edge insert a whole edge here and let's just go in and then we'll grab this guy now let's see what do I want to do I'm gonna just if I control drag through let's grab the the mask lasso control get the mask lasso here I'm gonna paint a mask over this whole edge and as long as I'm viewing the side orthographic that should travel through to this whole edge here and it should also travel through to the other side of the mesh All right so you're gonna go here and you get this whole edge inverse turn on gizmo alt click to center it here and then alt click to refresh and I'll alt click to put it in the center so basically I can now go in and I'm gonna take this thing I'm gonna flatten this down so I get a straight edge the insert edge is just following the contour of the topology. So I need to make this straight. 
And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in just control shift with rectangle, hold alt to remove all these faces. And then let's go tool display properties. I'm going to turn this double side on, which I have here in my custom UI. So I'm just toggling this on so I could see that whole shell. And, uh, all right, that looks good. So let's go in and delete hidden. So geometry, that's geometry, modify topo, delete hidden. And I just want to start bridging. So easy way to bridge with Z modeler brush, go to edge bridge and do edges. Click one, click the second to go to the target. So I may not be able to get a full quadded out piece here, depending on the flow. So I'm going to start with the most important parts, which are those edge loops. And then let's go here to here. And this is just going to have to be a try. Okay. And then I'll go to this one. Let's do this to this, this to this. Actually, I'm going to do this nice quad there and then triangulate out that part. Boom. Now uh, I'm going to do that group by normals. So when I press the D key and it smooths it out, you get this really bad result. Now I want to just crease these major changes. So these guys have their own polygroup. Another thing I like to do is crease polygroups. So when you click crease polygroups, it puts a nice little dotted line. Now when I press D, it smooths out and it rounds out that little piece, which that looks pretty good. If I don't want it to round though, what I might do is go to polygroups here to get a unique group for this face and then this face. If I do group by normals, that's going to go through and assign different groups. So what that means is that when they have different groups and you crease polygroups, it puts a crease around this shell. So basically that whole edge border of the polygroup and then this whole edge border. And now when I press D, I get a nice clean hard piece, which is super nice. Um, and then we'll be able to work on that a little bit later. So now those wheels are kind of showing through much better. And I might combine like a Boolean on top of that to cut out the wheel well on the inside towards the end. Um, all right, so now that I got these pieces going, I'm really not gonna hit the majority of the shell here. Let's go back to that George Hull concept. What I like about this is it's showing me a pretty good view of like the interior, and I wanna start to get these windows in place. So once we get the windows in place, we can hollow out the shell, actually start creating the interior of this stuff, and then start building these external components on the back. So uh, to do that, I think the first thing I want to do is just get that shell and those windows in place. So the best way to do this, uh, in my opinion, at least with uh, ZBrush, and make this quick and easy with the tools we've been working with, is to do a dynamic shell, and we'll do some Booleans to cut out the windows. So we'll call this, uh, I'm going to call this, outer body and I'm going to just make a copy. I always like to keep a backup of this piece. We'll call this outer body OG and I'm going to turn click it to turn it off. And then this new outer body piece, what I'm going to do is take this, make sure that this piece is in Dynamesh, which it is. Let's turn off project. And let's see what I want to do. I'm at 300,000. That should be good. Uh, I'm going to do what is called a create shell. So I want to create an inner shell that has thickness for this piece. So let's go into um, a brush. The way this works is you have to add an insert brush. So brush I, and let's just grab IMM primitives. And I have my custom interface change. You should see all the stuff here, which you would see normally is uh, this guy. It would look like this where you have the stuff on top. So just grab the insert sphere. It doesn't matter. It can be any insert brush. And we want to do a negative shell. So we want to do a subtraction on the inside. So subtraction with insert brushes means the alt key. So you hold alt, click and drag. So this is just to define the action to create the shell. So once you draw that thing, it draws it inside the model. So I'm going to press the W key to turn gizmo on and just pull this out. So this is, if it's a white poly group, that means it's a subtractive surface. So we're going to clear the mask. And normally if you control drag, it re meshes again. But in this case, we're gonna click the create shell button. I'm gonna take this thickness and probably crank it up to like 10 and we'll see what this does. So by doing this action and then clicking create shell, this is gonna take a second, it'll go through and process. What that means is it's gonna create a thickness of 10, which is just a rudimentary number 
um, that at this point doesn't doesn't have any definition of scale factor. It's just you know bigger the number, the the thicker the wall is essentially. So four uh, might have been a little too low, so I just crank it up a little bit, and you won't see anything happen because it's doing it all on the inside. But let's see. One thing I did notice here is, is I did lose with that process is I did lose some of that detail and that's fine actually in this case because i'm re the surface and i didn't have project on i lost some of the detail we're actually going to use the original body here to fix and tidy that up so that's why i'm keeping that as a backup so all i want out of this is to create that inner shell which now in this new piece if i hold Control shift and cut this thing in half you'll see we got this nice little inner wall so that inner wall is what i want i just want to grab that inner wall and this is the best way to do this in zbrush so it does a perfect inset extrusion from the surface normals of the object. So you're going to get the best result. The inner surface there, um, my mouse just keeps breaking on me. That's really strange. The inner surface is um, what we want. So what I'm going to do here is go to polygroups, do an auto group. So that's going to group. Technically speaking, what's happening here is we have an inner, uh, an inner shell that's closed and then an outer shell that's closed. So uh, what that means is when I auto group, these are going to get separate groups. So I control shift click on this and then drag. You see I get the inner shell. So basically I want to just uh, click on this, reverse to show this, and go to geometry, modify top of, delete hidden. So I just got the inner shell here. All right, now this piece is should still be in Dynamesh. So I'm going to turn on Gizmo and let's tidy this baby up. So we'll go in, click, let's click our Gizmo smooth all. And boom, that's going to tidy it up. Let's click this, click accept. Now, I don't need the shell to signify within, like if you turn off, let's turn off this original, turn on the original subtool and turn on transparency. So you see that piece is sitting in there. I don't need it to have a shell for this piece. I just need it to be the inside of the car itself. All right. So if that thickness uh, wasn't, let's see, the thickness of that wall, eh, it's pretty good I think actually I want it to be just a little bit thinner so I'm gonna undo back to before I did all this and I know it I know it's an undo once I go back before I regrouped and before the projection there we go so we got this so going back to this stage when we see the spheres I'm gonna go back to Dyna instead of 10 let's take it down to like six or yeah let's try six and then create shell All right, so then cut this in half. Let's check it. That looks a little bit better. I don't want it to be too thick. It'll make sense here in a second why. Because uh, basically, I'm going to have to use booleans to cut through and create the inner, to create the windows. And I don't want that wall to be too thick. Otherwise, I think it's just going to look silly. So let's do a auto group, control shift click, drag, get this inner piece, and I'm going to do delete hidden. So now let's go Dyna. You'll see that actually gave me a better result with that front piece, but let's smooth all. Go in, click accept. Turn transparency off here. And then I'm going to re dynamesh it and actually probably reduce the resolution a little bit lower. And re dynamesh it so it goes down. That way, when I smooth all, I should get symmetry can't be on for this should get a cleaner smooth and let's just push that a little bit more smooth will shrink so it will shrink the inner wall slightly but that's okay and I don't know if I really want any of this extra paneling so I'm just gonna hide part of this uh, no actually let's just leave it I think it'll be safer that way that way if I ever want to punch through and have it like go through the car um, you'll see what it'll look like here in a second so this will be our inner shell and basically what we want to do is we want to merge this with the outer shell. So make them one object. So that way I'm basically just cutting it out from the duplicate and adding it back to the original. Mainly because the original, I want to keep those nice clean edges that I applied there that I get I get a loss of detail from the, the resolution that I had from the duplicate. So this is a great way to preserve this. And uh, I might even make another copy, keep the original. We'll call this outer body we'll call this one body shelled because we're about to shell this interior. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to do a merge 
down on top of that new inner shell. So now these guys become one piece. So again, if I control shift drag, you should see that stuff is in there. Now, one thing that would will happen is if you, the inside of the surface needs to be flipped here. Let's just uh, set up this first Boolean for the window. So I wanna do these nice little, I like George Hull's like stylized sort of windows, like those nice tapered windows. So let's get in there and let's do that real quick. So in, because this thing has an inner face, if you hold control with a mask pen brush and I just paint a mask on here, let's just see if I go select this inner shell. You see how the mask travels through? Those walls are really close together. So ZBrush will see faces that are fairly close. So when I draw a mask here, it's gonna probably travel through. And I don't want this for this process because I wanna do an extract. So I'm gonna clear it, hold control, go to brush, auto masking, and turn on back face masking. So by holding control, you're selecting the mask brush and then you're turning that auto masking, back face masking option onto the control brush, the mask brush, which means basically anything behind the camera shouldn't be added to. Whoops, make sure I did that. Control, boom. Well, interesting that that's still traveling through. Hmm, I'm gonna have to look into that. That's supposed to be working. Okay, well, if it doesn't, not a problem. We can clear this up fairly easily. So first and foremost, what I'll do is I just want to get that window, which I want it to follow the same curvature. So I'm going to go in, mask this off, control click a little bit, control alt click to sharpen, control. So I'm just kind of shrinking it away. And then I'm using that same image as my reference here. And I think what I want to do is go, let's go control, grab the mask curve. And I want this to go sort of following the same maybe curvature that we have here, right? Or maybe introduce a little bit more. So I want these lines to kind of travel in the same direction, of course. So with this one, you have to hold Control and Alt to subtract from this. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then Control Alt, I might just cut out like a corner here. There we go, so we get a nice little piece. Now let's go to do a subtool extract, boom, and then click accept. So oh, it looks like the, the mask by backface masking did actually protect it. If it didn't protect it, what this would look like is the, it would be two shells, one from the inside and one from the outside, but this seemed to work fine. So then a uh, little thing I want to do, turn double side on, let's go tidy up these edges for this window here. I'm going to grab poly groups and just look at this shell here. So I'm gonna do that same trick at these corners. Anywhere I want it to be a sharper edge. I'm gonna go through and polish this here in a second. Let's go boom. We'll make a little hard point there. Auto group and let's just go in and reassign these parts here. Control W, that looks good. Control W. One more. Let's go orange and purple go together. Actually, this one I'll do. A little trick you can do is you can mask something off, press Control W there to reassign that one. All right, cool. So the extraction, this is just something that happens with the extraction. You can turn, when you extract, you can do more smoothness. But in this case, I know that I'm going to modify this shape. Oh, no. I look, oh, that's right. This thing just looks too similar. I know that I'm going to make changes to these edges anyway, so I don't increase the smoothness on the extract. I like to just do this by hand with the Polish by Features. So then going in here, let's run this. And that's going to start polishing up those edges, right? All right, so then you get this nice little uh, addition. We can keep polishing that thing out. The, you see this one's still just a little wonky. So a little trick that I like to do is just help it get to where it needs to go by just going in with the move brush and just slightly line that up a little bit more. The move brush is not perfect by any means. It's hard to make that a perfect stroke, but Polish by Features will go through and tidy that up for you. So if you just slightly tweak those little pieces and then polish should be good to go so there's a nice little 
<clears throat> extraction for the window. And this I'm going to be using for two things. First thing I'm going to do is punch through to create the, to see the inside of the car. So we'll call this uh, side window add. And I'm going to duplicate it and call this one side window sub for subtract. So I'm going to turn off the add. I'm going to move the sub up below the car. And let's grab the car here and clear the mask. So then we'll turn off the old backup car. And let's see, what else do I want to do? Okay, so I want to set the, we've got the car shell here that has the interior combined to it. Then we have the window subtract. So if you set this thing to subtract here, you'll see that it's going to take this object and cut it from the, the mesh above it. So you see I have everything else turned off, just the cars visible. And with live booleans on, it's going to do that subtraction. So if I take this piece here, let's alt click with gizmo, push this through. If we push it through, say we go through and we scale it, or actually let's go. Oh, right. Okay. So this is what's going to happen. So right now, basically, if I just keep pushing this down, let's just say we go like turn local symmetry on, we'll scale this thing like super thick and right? say we make that really thick and it's basically pushing through that surface. Right now, there is an inner shell there that should be showing me the inside, but there's one thing that I didn't do. I, I kind of waited to show you that here towards the end because I wanted to sort of make this point that it won't work unless you do this one step. So let's grab the car and then we're going to go, we want to isolate out the inside shell. So easy way to do this. I want to keep these poly groups just in case. So I'm going to control shift click on one group and then do visibility grow all, which is going to grow to the complete outer shell. If I control shift drag, that's going to isolate the inner. So this one, this, the surface normals for this negative uh, sort of subtraction on the inside to work with booleans, you need to have the surface normals flipped. So when double side is off, basically what that means is when you select the inner shell, you shouldn't see the faces here. So if I click flip, you'll see now it's flipping those normals and then control shift click to drag and add everything back. Now let's go turn that solo off so we can see the window. And now this window, let's go grab this inner poly group, mask that off. And I'm going to just alt click to grab the surface direction of that window and then alt click to go to center. And basically what will happen is when I pull this inside, it's going to punch through and now you'll see the inside of that car. So kind of long winded, um, but now I'm getting a really sweet little adjustment here for that window. And I think that'll be a uh, really nice, a nice way to kind of go through and start like seeing the internal components and then, uh, continue working from here. So then uh, the rest of this stuff, what I want to do is let's go grab. Now that we set up that internal shell, I'm going to grab this mask, this poly group and mask it. Let's control click a couple times, control alt click, kind of keep shrinking it. Maybe I'm in a good groove and you guys are learning stuff, but it looks like the chat is just radio silent. I guess that's a good thing. Keeps me from getting distracted. <laughs> All right, so then I want to get rid of like, I want to do that half moon sort of top. So control, I might just do the mass curve and then control alt to cut away from that line. So basically, if you don't know these curved brushes, anything that's anything that's traveling, basically following the direction of that gradient going up, anything past that line in that direction is getting cut out depending on the, the way you use it. So control drag adds, control alt subtracts in that direction. And that's pretty much it. All right, so I cut that out and then um, let's go in here. And I want to do a little like hard point control alt drag to get a nice little like angled curve. And I want to separate like a moon roof from the, uh, the windshield here. So actually crap. It looks like I want that moon roof to be lined up with this curve. So let's go. Subtract it like this. That's a little better. So that way the window is going to be back here and then let's go with the control key. Let's actually, you know, this is something I've never, the B radius with control clip curve. Nope, not going to work. Let's go mask pen uh, stroke 
I'm going to turn lazy mouse on for this. And I want this to kind of have just like a slight curvature. And then control alt to sharpen. And you know, I can maybe get a little extra details in here with like these corners. Uh, okay, thanks guys. Aaron jumped in. You said you're learning tons. Thanks. Uh, good, good to hear. <laughs> Wake him once in a while you're using a mouse. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I like, I'm all about using the pen as much as I can, but there's just some things you just need that mouse for, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a baby about it. All right. So it doesn't even really matter too much about that extraction to, with those corners. We can modify that with the polish, but let's go to, um, sub tool, <clears throat> sub tool, extract. Oh, but there's actually one thing let's do sub tool extract at zero two and let's just click accept. I don't know if I like this. Uh, I want this windshield to go a little bit further down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this one. We'll keep that extract, but I want to just take this guy and let's tell this to travel a little bit further down. I like that long windshield effect. And one thing I like to do with the mask brush, if you go to brush, um, this is like, if you hold control and lightly draw it, you see you get uh, pressure sensitivity, right? But in this case, like the quality of the mask, I need it to be strong. I want it to be a nice strong selection. So the extraction, basically if I have like some faint sort of like extracted lines in there and I do extract some of those parts, they'll come in, but sometimes you might get holes and things like that. So like, you look at that, you see you get like these little gaps and holes. So with the mask brush, I hold control, go to tablet pressure, and I use the global settings. So that way when I hold control, I don't have to, I don't deal with the pressure sensitivity with the mask. And let's go in here. Just extending, then I'm going to hold control and turn lazy mouse off. Maybe that's just a little too close to that, uh, just a little too close to the front. So this would be maybe a little bit easier with the mask curve. Oops, I don't like that. Undo. Nice, um, <laughs> Mr. Hanks. Yeah, the, the oh hey, look, I'm glad that my voice could be uh, good enough for background noise, as long as it's not too annoying. <laughs> All right, so let's going just a little bit further down, like you see there. Um, I want that to be. I don't know if that's going to collide with it. Let's just give it a shot. We'll extract this piece. Click accept. This will be windshield two. Clear that mask there, and let's go back to this one, clear that mask. So this piece, I'm just gonna separate out these parts. So just control shift the lasso, let's do a split hidden. I rename this one, and shield one, and then this one's gonna be the moon roof. All right, so let's just check windshield one real fast. So this is a little trick, like this might be one because I only need to do, I want to do hard corners. Using Z Modeler to go do polygroup, just Alt select some of these corners here and click to add a polygroup. Maybe Alt select these guys to do one there. 
with symmetry. So now let's just take that really fast. Go run the polish. I'm going to turn off that moon roof for now. Set this guy to subtract. And then I'm going to go in and grab the inner poly group of these faces. Mask it off. The only reason why I do this with Gizmo is you can even just turn Gizmo on, control click to get this piece. But a little thing to go a little further is find the center of the object and click Alt, which will give you the arrow direction traveling in the, the closest possible direction of this thing to just go straight in. So then I can just take this thing, punch that through. And that one looks pretty good. We can clear that mask. And then moon roof, same deal. I'm probably just going to go in and do those Z model their poly groups. All right. So th that's so much easier than doing the selection lasso and grabbing the corners, right? When you can do it like that, as long as you're, that only really works if you're doing like a hard corner with multiple points. If you just go in and add a single poly group at the corner, it's not going to work. You need these things to have edges to, to meet. Uh, David's also learning during work. Sweet. You guys are, I love the multitasking. I like to do that too, actually. I will, anytime I'm working on a project, even like when I'm preparing for something like this, uh, just figuring out what I'm going to do or working on tutorial stuff, like, well, tutorial stuff I have to talk, but um, I like to, if I'm just working, sometimes throw on a podcast or something that I can like, maybe even just like a simple tutorial, watch somebody else work. I actually like to watch a lot of the live streams. Um, to me, it's, it's a great background noise as well. You pick up a few tips here and there. You don't have to like directly pay attention, but, uh, you know, you get some nice little info. All right. So moon roof's good. That looks great. Now the extra windshield. Um, let's just try that one out. So one thing that happens when you do extractions is you see, I get a polygroup here and here and here and here. So the polygroups when extraction goes, when you cross over, if I undo the mask is traveling across two polygroups. So when the extraction comes off, it keeps that base polygroup there. It will always create one clean loop at the extrusion. So the extraction is just simply extruding and it creates one polygroup for that extruded edge loop but these guys need to be for this polish by features to work i need to regroup that and regroup that i'm going to give it a different color there we go and then let's go z modeler do that same little trick <clears throat> And just, it's pretty low res. So it's 55,000. You'll see when I open up that circle and I run that polish, it gets to where it gets to the end polish pretty quickly when you're at lower resolutions. And let's turn off the original windshield. Let me just do a quick save real fast. I think I'm going to try and go past one o'clock. So I'm going to chug some coffee right now. Um, Shinoki one. Oh, you said hi. Hello. Sorry. I missed that. What's going on? Did I say that right? Shinoki. Inverse. Let's go alt click to find the center and let's just pull that in. I'm curious. I think this one, because it's traveling too far down might collide with that inner component with this Boolean, but let's find out. Yeah, it's so close. It's like running into that little chassis part there. I mean, I'll be able to build like a nice little dash. I just like how far that thing is traveling through. Um, what could we do about that? We could actually, let's try this. We could go back to the car here and let's go. We can leave this live boolean preview on. Let's go turn gizmo on. Go to deformer. Okay. 
What did I do there? Let's go deformer on. And maybe let's go control alt grab some of these faces in the front here and just extend that shape a little bit further. That way that windshield can travel a lot longer. And let's go accept. And this piece, I'm going to grab this outer group, mask it. The gizmo position stays where it was before. So we should be able to go in and turn live billions on now. Oh, yeah, I think I like that. You get a nice little, like, lip here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we got a nice shell happening in here. All right, so let's move on from this so I can start doing some new stuff. Um, so I'm going to make this Boolean. We got these windows here for subtractions, and I'm going to use those also as the windows themselves here in a second. Um, but before I do, I need to actually generate the Boolean piece. Um, so I'm going to go into, with live Booleans on with this stuff set up, I'm going to turn off the front wheels and all the other subtools so we just see the shell. And let's go Boolean. Let's do make Boolean mesh. And we'll actually generate out this shell. So now we get this new U-Mesh. Call this U-Mesh body shell. Go back to my scene here. Windshield 1 is a backup. So I keep like, I'm going to move windshield. Any of these extra parts that I don't want, like this front bumper. I made this at some point in this process, like trying to do the the front bumper of Luigi's car maybe as the front. I decided against it, but I'm just going to click on these. Like here's some like techie kind of wheels that I did um, from a previous build that um, I could talk about this. Like eventually for this piece, I want to start at the end. I want to start getting to this. I want to start showing you guys some of these techniques to do like little grooves and cut lines in those surfaces. Um, yeah, Dougie, you're asking about detailing the full interior and exterior. That's pretty much what I want to do. So I want to get to this kind of stuff and I'm not really going to be able to do that until I get these shapes solidified. So I'm thinking the next stream, I'll probably be able to get more in detail and focus just on that level of detail. So I'm going to take this piece here. I'm going to click new folder and call this misc extras. I don't like to, it's a really bad habit, but I don't like to delete anything which is in terms of like spring cleaning, you just have files everywhere. Like I have two, two terabyte drives of just extra stuff that I probably don't even know what's in there anymore. <laughs> like models, thing, projects I never finished. It's part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be fun, Dougie. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this is a fun piece and that, that, um, George Hull reference is pretty awesome to kind of grab some cool ideas from. So we got the Boolean part. I'm just turning everything else off so I can organize. I'm going to go back to body shelled. So this one, actually, we don't really need anymore. We got the original body. Actually, I'll call this outer body OG2. So that's two backups of this. Windshield one, moon roof, side windows. And we made a duplicate of those. All right, so let's just go insert that new U mesh. Now we get this piece. We could turn live buildings off. We don't need it anymore. So we'll call this U mesh body shell. This will be just windshield. This will be just moon roof. I get a little nitpicky with um, Subtool names, we'll just call this side window. I just hate when things aren't named correctly and I can't really tell what's what. Subtool folders makes things so much easier indeed. It really, really does. Like right now, what I could do is, uh, let's go turn the chair on in here. Put the chair, that, these are all extra body parts. Let's do new folder, we'll call this extra body. Put all these ones in here so I can clean up the subtool tree. Keep those visibility on and then turn it off here. So then now all I see is 
move those guys down below. All the ones up that aren't in a folder are going to be things that I'm still editing and figuring out where they go. And then we get side windows. So all these window parts, I'm going to set these back to add. So now what I can do is like, let's just go start with these side windows. So we got this stuff cut out and now I'm just going to go in. I'm going to start trying to bring this in. Now it's not going to match perfectly. So what I want to do is probably grab this poly group, move that up a little bit so it's thinner because I want it to have a little bit of edge border in there. And so moving it here, okay, that's too much. I think that's just enough inset inside and out. Great. All right, so then here's where like, I just want to make this stuff line up better. A really big move brush will make this very easy. So I can kind of move and flex this whole shape to come back up into following, just kind of checking that that curvature looks good. All right, that looks good. And then looks like it might need to go just a little bit inside and down. So I want that to completely collide in there. All right, so that looks great. So this part really just helps with uh, let me just, in the background, I'm going to load up key shot here so you can kind of see. So like for the render, like the just, this is like a quick render I did uh, last night while preparing for this. Um, just like trying to get the primary shapes working. Like you can see, like we get transparency. So the thing has to have an interior shell. And with key shot, when you drop a transparent material on top of that, it's going to push through. So like, I'll show you what I mean. Like Let's load up that project real fast. My vehicle resources folder. We'll let that thing go. While it's doing that, I'm going to go grab the moon roof. Undo those scale changes to it. Let's just bring this down. And let's see what's going on on the inside. Yeah, that face needs to come up like a lot. So I'll grab this bottom face, mask it. I need to stop doing that. I need to do the district control click way faster. But I just want to alt click in the center so I get a snapping point to the right angle. And then keep it in the center so that way I can kind of go in here and flex and bend. Now, if I'm just editing this part, if I go to the car and just grab this chunk here, now I can actually go in and see what's going on in here. I like to do this kind of stuff just to hide and show visibility to kind of help. And I still have this thing masked on the bottom portion. So the bigger the move brush, the less lumpy those curves are going to be. If you go too small, this is why. Too small, you start to get little things like this, right? Where you're moving not enough of that surface. But big, it's sort of like a nice little rigging tool. The, the more vertex points you're grabbing, the softer those adjustments are going to be. And we'll... That looks good. Now I can go back here, click to bring this back. So we got those guys in place. And then going back to... Okay, skip, skip. Go do the windshield while that's still loading. So I'm just undoing this one back to before I added any thickness to it. Thankfully, I'm still in the same session. So I'm getting all the undo history that I could just undo this subtraction back to before. Uh, side effects, you're asking about mood infinite. Yeah, actually, so in the first stream, I was using... Um, that's a great question. I was using move infinite in the first stream a lot because I like to do that for uh, just the general, like sh the silhouette kind of shaping. Um, now that I have things that have curvature at the sides, it becomes a little bit harder to work. It works in some situations perfectly. Like I was able to do the chair with move infinite. Like that chair was literally just taking just a piece. And if you just go to brush move infinite, I can 
along the side axis, I'm hitting that whole axis of points, right? So I can go in and like edit and customize out this, you know, the shape of this chair, pull all this stuff out. It's really, really nice. If I go to three quarter, if anybody who doesn't know what this does is it looks at infinite, the brush is called move infinite depth. So if you go brush move infinite depth. So it looks at the depth of the camera, whichever angle you're viewing the object. So if I click and drag it from three quarter, basically anything where my cursor is traveling through the mesh is getting moved. Right? So everything all the way through to the back. But if you're at an orthographic side view, now you can go in and do stuff like this, where you can just kind of like tweak and modify just the shape of this thing pretty nice. So I was using that with um, the creating the hole the original hole um, a lot. And I use it a lot more in different situations. Um, like right now, it's not gonna help. Here's where, this is where I don't think it helps is if you look at this shape, if I'm pulling here, you'll see that the if I try and move this down, it's traveling along a surface. Basically, it's going along a straight line path through the mesh. From this angle, it's going all the way through. So if the thing has curvature like this, you're not grabbing everything evenly and it can have issues. So for me, stuff like this, I'd rather go at a three quarter with just a big move brush and just find the angle here and just kind of start to pull that in. And I think I get more control that way. But yeah, that brush is so awesome. We added that in the last version and um, it basically is, uh, it's a setting you can turn on to any brush, by the way. If you go to brush uh, depth, we have infinite depth now. So this is the setting. So if you go to brush move infinite, and you go here into the brush palette in depth, you'll see that that button is on. So you can basically turn that on to any brush and experiment. You know, we got a lot of sculpting brushes and things that maybe you want to try having push across a, a surface, you know, like, um, I don't know, let's go like, yeah, well, anyways, I won't, I won't waste any time going through it, but it could be a good experiment for later. So like here, I'm just trying to like fix these little curves. This one's a little messy from the uh, the extraction. Like that thing's kind of dipping down. And I might want to modify that just slightly with the polish by features to like tweak and bubble. May just to maybe make it like you see how it's kind of that was from the extracted surface. It's, it's kind of bubbly or rather not bubbly. And I want it to have a nice clean curvature. So for this, what I might do is mask this off. Control click to blur it. So the ben what I'm going to do here is I don't want to touch any of the other polishing of these edges or underneath. I just want to deal with this green part. Um, so if I grab this, mask it, control click to blur it away from the edge. Basically, I'm protecting all the edges and I'm only dealing with this part. Um, Emilio, I'll get to your question here in a second. So if I just go in here and let's just say we go in with a just inflate brush at a low intensity here, we could just kind of start. Oh, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Dang it. Hold on. I might have brutalized it. It could be. I bet this is probably because I just I launched Keyshot. So something to keep in mind, ZBrush is highly CPU intensive, right? And for me, as you guys probably watch me, I'm talking probably too fast. I'm clicking stuff really quickly when I start working. If you're repeatedly clicking stuff and switching back and forth really fast, it's taking a lot of CPU to bounce back and forth between things. So every once in a while, you might get these just memory locks or CPU locks that just it doesn't have enough memory to complete. ZBrush does a, a great job to, if you leave it, actually, it's going to try, it's working in the background to try to recover. And it's gotten a lot better uh, over the years. So try not to like let it force quit too much if you're trying to recover. But what I was going to say is launching Keyshot too, that's using up memory and CPU as well. So um, the more you're pulling from other programs and things, the the chances go up higher. Let's see if we can, I'm just going to have to close it. Hold on, let's wait. And I'll go to Emilia's question to give it a second. Um, you're saying I don't have the plugin Gozi to Keyshot, so how can I export my objects to import into Keyshot? How do I export all the sub tools? Oh yeah, uh, easy one. Uh, Andreas, do you have streaming software? Yeah, so I'm also, I'm running OBS um, with this machine to run the stream. So OBS is kicking out to Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. 
Um, so yeah, that's running as well. That's more, I mean, I don't know much about OBS's programming, but I'm just gonna have to force quit this. Just hope that it, that it goes. Um, but um, I don't know how much they're using. I know it's, that's gonna be more GPU most likely. Uh, th those types of programs do not use as much CPU. CPU is just, a, you know, it's its own sort of ballpark of resources. Recover tool. All right. Black Pixel, you're asking about um, VR functionality. Um, interesting question. I wouldn't be able to say um, if we're going to. It's, it's definitely something we've talked about, and um, I wouldn't be able to say much more. But we are aware of that technology, and we see it that it's growing. And uh, if there's an opportunity for us to do it, we absolutely will. So right now, we get a lot out of, um, you know, computer desktop-based platforms and the hardware that you can get from that. So it, it makes sense for a lot of us to stay in ZBrush because ZBrush is highly, uh, it's able to go into extremely high resolutions, right? So the benefit of that is like, you really can't beat that in any other sculpting platform in terms of the type of resolution and surface you can get, the kinds of high fidelity details that we get in ZBrush. Um, so we love this this format, but yeah, VR, it could happen soon enough. I've definitely used some of those myself. Like I've used Oculus Medium. I like Tilt Brush. Some of those things are fun to work in. Um, Paolo, you're saying is being is uh, hardware requirement is a very nice software. Are you saying ZBrushes? If you are, thank you. That's a very kind compliment. I know. Yeah, thank you so much. All the, all of our development guys, I'll be sure to share with everyone. That means a lot to us. So, like, all I'm really doing is kind of trying to go in here and just like with symmetry I'm just using inflate brush to kind of fill that space in and it doesn't really matter if it's too if it's lumpy right now because the polishing will kind of fill it back in so like I was mentioning earlier if you just kind of give it I'm just checking that curvature you could even go in this is one that be careful with deformation stuff on this low res it shouldn't be too much of an issue but running things like inflate if you inflate too quickly or just go like click from 0 to 100 um, every once in a while you might get a lock up too with memory. So if I just do inflate of maybe like 10, I can kind of bulb that, bulbous that out. And then let's go back here and do mask this off. I want to make sure that this edge doesn't get pulled down too much. So you see, I'm kind of moving that back up and now let's run that polish by features. And then it'll start to like level all this stuff out pretty nice. There we go. So slight, I mean, I fiddled with it for far too long, but you get the point, hopefully, that it, it cleans up so much. I, I show this so much because in terms of like comparing, what, that was one of the features we added back in, oh, I can't even remember which version of ZBrush that was. Um, oh, it's like 4R4-ish, four 4R5-ish. Four four back in that generation, we were developing these kinds of features and it might have that feature may have been there even before. I, it's hard to remember the the time goes by so quickly. But when we were developing that stuff, it was in, in intended, and this is really that really came out with the edge loop panel ups features. Those in particular, um, trying to get away from just the traditional way of modeling, like being forced to like make a base mesh and retop all the time. I mean, if you work in production, yeah, you got to do that no matter what. But in terms of design, um, we were just trying to you know, really take a stab at trying to get some better ways to work. And in my opinion, I like being able to use these features a bit more than the traditional way of like doing topology and, you know, all that stuff is like, I don't get me wrong. I love Z modeler. If you guys watch my streams, you know, I do that stuff all the time um, because it's very precise, but I love to experiment with stuff like this too in my workflows. And the Mandalorian helmet was another one. I do a lot of, uh, I teach product design, 
um, at the college level and do a lot of like things like shoes and backpacks and those types of things that you can do a whole lot with panel loops and get some amazing uh, stuff with just these features alone. And I use it for everything, really. Like I'll show you, let me show you real quick, like as a talking point since I'm rambling on about it. Um, things like, let's see if I have it in here. Okay, so some of these, you know, are more filled out than others, but like doing things like a shoe. I do so much panel loops with this to get just separate extrusions and pieces and like getting an extraction like this. Um, this is something I love to use for more organic type stuff. Um, even like, I mean, this is like an unfinished project. I did a sort of stream on this, like doing a, a Nike Air Mag, like getting some of the shapes and shells, getting the sole patterns going. Um, like this one, here's another like, Nike running shoe, like doing all these kinds of extrusions and patterns. I'm using so much of the polish by features to do like clean shapes here, especially where you see like these lines are kind of going and they're inset. Um, I use this a ton. So if you look at my, the, at the presentation uh, replays on zbrushlive.com, I did a shoe showing off some of these panel lip techniques for that, um, for that Nike Air Mag. So you can check that out. That should be there. If you go back to the, um, if you just look for my name, like, if you just do Solomon, since I've apparently been removed from the presenters list on ZBrush Live, <laughs> YouTube, um, ZBrush Live, I'm sure it'll come up. Yeah, this one, these Back to the Future Air Mags. I'll paste that one in there if you guys are interested to check this stuff out later. Uh, that one I get into some really cool stuff towards the end. It's like getting into like doing the sole shapes and getting some really cool groovy kind of lines. I love it for that stuff. But anyways, I move on. <coughs> Black Pixel, that's the, that's the kindest compliment I think I've ever had. <laughs> he said, just Google Keanu Reeves sculpting and ZBrush and Solomon will appear. Man, if only. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Dregs. Yeah, Dougie, you're saying um, so many awesome features in ZBrush. Yeah, all of these, when you really combine them together, that's where you start to get the real power. Using them individually are great, but I like to combine them all. Like eventually I'll Z-remesh this stuff and I'll do some extra things with these features for sure. Um, Jupiter, you're saying, oh, geez, I missed a bunch of, comments here Andreas was saying previously uh, goes to max it's working with max 2020 but not with new 20 oh you're working on 2121 huh <laughs> that's great uh, I know you meant 2021 um, yeah so oh, I'll look into that I'll mention that to uh, the rest of our team if it's uh, not working for you, usually anytime the, the newest versions come out, there might be a bit of a delay between Gozi updates between those other programs. Um, but we'll, we'll look into that for sure. Um, Paolo, you're saying you started with a bad computer and it was enough. Yeah. That ZBrush can work, um, at, it can function at a pretty low level. Like the minimum requirements is like eight gigs of RAM, a decent, not even a, you can have an okay processor and it will work where you may start to run into issues when you get into like 20, 30 million or higher and you're trying to do stuff. That's where you may start to run into problems, but you don't really need to go that high when you're just sculpting and working on shapes. Like I can do a whole lot at this low level and we do a lot of optimization in the background with ZBrush. So that's a very good compliment. Um, Terge, I'm sorry I missed your question. You're saying, uh, thank you for the for the kind words, by the way. Um, I'm healthy and well. I hope you are as, as well. IMM brushes will be pushing the strength under brush deformers tab. Usually ZBrush stops working. Um, pushing strength under brush deformers tab. 
Um, not sure what you mean by that with the insert brushes. Are you talking about the, the insert brushes usually deal with this modifiers tab? Um, sorry, Turgay, if you're still there, if you want to clarify on that point, I can answer that question. Um, if it stops working ZBrush, maybe you're pointing to like an issue of a crash or something. If you, if you have one, um, you can submit it to us in support. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, just go to pixelogic.support.com uh, or just Google Pixelogic support and just send a ticket. It'll come to one of us developers and we'll take a look. Uh, Jupiter, you were saying when you extrude a plane using face, it just moves the face in the direction I want. Is there a way to keep the initial face, then get the extension? Oh, like you want to just move it in the direction where you want it to go and then have it do it. Um, face in the direction I want. Is there a way to keep the initial face and get the extension? Yeah, so if you're dealing with just single faces, maybe uh, I think I understand what you're saying. I'm going to go real quick back here. Hopefully you're still there, Jupiter. Otherwise, I'm just giving this to everybody else. Uh, if you go, just say we go here, we we'll go to Z Modeler here. So I assume you're using Z Modeler. Let's delete, turn on double side. So you get one solid poly. If you do extrude a single poly, if you bring it out, that should keep the original and do the extrusion. So if you are on move, move is just going to pull that polygon and move it into place. So extrude should keep that polygon and go out. Now, one thing to note is you'll see, take a look at this cube here. Like the the object itself, like say you have two faces here, the the there's a central space. When you would do extrusions with Z model, it's supposed to go away from the center of the object, whatever that is. So if I take this face here, we got two faces. So you see this is the inside. These are the outside. So this is going the outside direction. This is going outside. If you extrude out, it's going to work normally. But if you take this face and extrude inwards, if you don't have double-sided on, uh, double-sided normals is to be allowing you to show both sides of that surface, right? So if I go back here with double-sided off, basically, this is what you would see by default, which is nothing here. But when I go to the outside, you see those faces. So if you extrude inwards, you're not going to see all that stuff correctly. But if you extrude outwards, you see that perfectly. And that's because the surface normals are not shown on the insides of the polygons or the, the, the opposite sides of those polygons. So one, one quick tip with C modeler extrusions and stuff, you can always turn double on, but I recommend you always try and extrude away from the surface. Um, if you go inside, like if we go here, here, we extrude inwards with double off, it's going to look flipped. So if you just click flip, that'll flip that thing back and reverse those normals. So hopefully that answers uh, your question. Uh, Brian, yeah, my next live stream is, it's every two weeks. So yeah, I'm actually, well, I'm streaming this project every two weeks. I'm doing another one every two weeks, which is ZBrush Core um, doing, uh, let me see if I can, it looks like I broke that up. Here, I'll pull this one up. character example that's the one I want this one here so it's doing this um, like uh, what would you call it it's like a stylized Fortnite kind of character in ZBrush core so that one is just um, a new stream that I started recently um, started last week for the first time so I'll be on the 23rd but that's the project I'm gonna be doing is building that character so it's a stylized character this one's a little different and a bit more advanced uh, than that one. That one's just kind of focusing on just basic character sculpting and modeling, character sort of design uh, techniques. Yeah, that one. That one's going pretty well so far. It's um, you know, doing character work. It's been a little while. Like the last character that I did, you know, I showed you guys the Luigi one on the streams. Those take. It depends on the the, the style. If stylized characters to me are. A little bit harder to, to do um, unless you really are experienced like uh, I saw point pusher was in here earlier Danny Williams dropped by he was an amazing I mean that guy can do pretty much anything but uh, he's worked at places like blue sky DreamWorks um, you know those guys do amazing work Shane Olson one of our other streamers Shane's mastered that same sort of style he worked for Disney Infinity and, and now he's off doing his own stuff but um, to me, that this kind of stylized work takes quite a bit to uh, to nail down. So real quick, I'm going to just go, just in case I want to look at these models. 
this is a crash recovery. So I'm going to go grab the original project. Uh, Turgate, you're saying projection strength and usually your own brushes. Is there any polygon limitation or must be Dynamesh or low poly? I see what you're saying. So you're talking about insert brushes um, with the projection strength. So if we, let me just load this tool really fast. Uh, projection strength. This is a really cool feature actually, and I'll probably get to this in my next one. If you go to brush insert, let's just say we grab a, a primitives brush here. I'm going to click little pro tip. I don't like, um, I don't like the IMM viewer when the placement is normally, if it's on, it's here. I don't like anything that takes away from my screen space. Like if I'm working, I actually normally have the trays closed. Um, I have a full document space, let's go document new. And I have my custom menu items here. When I press the two key, I have all my palettes and things that I want. So I don't, I just want to have maximum screen space basically. So I don't like this viewer. So long story short, um, what I do is I don't, I don't turn this auto show off. And when you select primitive brushes, when you press the M key, M is in Michael, um, this one, this allows you to basically see all the insert mesh parts still without using that viewer. So M still brings them up. Let's just grab a, Oh, I don't know. Maybe like an insert cube. So when you go to brush modifiers and with an insert brush, you can turn up projection strength. So basically let's just take a look real quick. Um, when you go click and drag with an insert brush, it draws it on the surface normal of the piece. Now it doesn't follow the contour of that shape unless you tell it to. So it's just wherever you click and drag, it's drawing on that normal and drawing outwards. Now, if you go into that setting brush modifiers and you turn projection strength up to say 100 that's just a percentage so how much of the curvature is it trying to capture if you do it at 100 you click and drag you're going to see that this piece now is basically form wrapped to that surface now uh, Turgay's question he was asking uh, he has his own brushes is there a polygon limitation or must it be a dynamesh um, it really all it comes down to is think of it as like a rigging situation if you're familiar with rigging the the vertex points the more what the projection is doing is wrapping and matching to vertex points so if there are an, enough vertex points around the shape for it to wrap to it does a really good job so for this example you see the cube has enough evenly distributed points the base surface itself has enough evenly distributed points and this thing's going to work pretty nicely right it'll go through and wrap so let's say we grab something more techy like um Oh, I don't know, machine parts, click M. I'll go grab like one of these like recess dials or something. So if I click and drag, this should still have that. This is a new brush, so projection is off. So I'll set that to 100. And if I wrap this thing here, you'll see that that thing is following the contour of that shape. And then I could do stuff like this where I could go subtool, split, unmasked. The benefit to this stuff is like you can do this where you go live boolean and you set that to subtract and it's got the nice curvature to wrap uh, on something that has curvature. So in short though, really what you what you need to do is you just need to have uh, a clean, evenly distributed thing with enough points. So dynameshing it helps. It helps remesh that surface, but you'll see here with these parts, like these pieces are just clean topology surfaces that have, if you look at the base of it, as long as it has enough vertex points at the base, it should be able to wrap and, and work. Um, there's no real limitation, but the higher resolution the surface is, the more accurate it's going to be and the longer it might take. So if this thing was like, if you had something that had really crazy curvature, um, say we go into like this right here, like where you have curvature happening there. If I go in with 100% and I try and project that, you see it's working a lot harder to project to that surface and it's doing a pretty good job with this base piece. However, in order for it to project, it's gonna deform or reshape this piece as well. So something to consider uh, in that on that topic. Um, Jupiter, you're saying things I do is hard surface in Maya and the question about extrusion was in Maya. Oh, interesting. So you're saying that that's happening, that what you were talking about was happening in Maya. If that's the case, I don't know. It should be doing the same thing that it was happening for me in ZBrush with, with ZModeler.
what Maya, tell me which Maya you're in. I'm, I mean, I'm, I've been a Maya user for quite a long time, but in terms of the Z model they portion, I would just say, make sure that the, it's, it probably could be something similar to what I was just dealing with, showing you with the surface normals. Uh, Glenn, you're saying, what about a mandala circle between a circle? 2018. Um, okay. Yeah, Jupiter, I'm sorry. I don't know for certain when I extrude, it just moves the polygon. The only thing I can think of is maybe if you are in the extrude mode, just like in Z Modeler, if those normals are having issues, if they're flipped in some way, you may not see them. So make sure that you're in the extrude mode. And if you select all the faces, you can go to Edit Mesh and tell the edit or select all the faces go to edit mesh and click set to face set normals to face and that should set them all to the, the natural state i would start with that but otherwise i'm not sure um yeah so glenn you're saying a, a mandala a circle between a circle <clears throat> i'm not quite sure what you mean i'm just googling this is this a particular oh i see what you're saying so like you want to do like a shape like shapes within the shape. Do you mean as like a insert brush? Okay, Terge, I'm glad that that answered your question. Ho I'm, I was, wasn't sure if that was, was it. Um, and Glenn, let me know what you mean by a mandala. If, if you're talking about in terms of insert mesh brushes and projection, I can talk about that. Uh, anything will work with the projection though, if that's what you're mentioning. In terms of insert mesh, it'll do the same thing. So if you go into like a cylinder here, let's say we do initialize we go give this an inner radius and let's do um whoops not clone make poly mesh and then we go sub tool and we'll go insert a basic cylinder bring that thing in inside out is this what you mean I'll come back to this if um, you got some more info because I'm not 100% sure if that's what, what you mean. Because you said bless you. So I assume that maybe I got something right. But um, anyways, I'll come back to that here in a second. Um, so we got this new, we got the windows in place. Everything's good. Um, I want to push this a little bit further till 2 o'clock. So hopefully you guys don't. What do you guys think? Is that okay? Or do you hate this and do you want me to stop? <laughs> Because what I want to do next is um, let's go do a new folder. We'll call this Windows. I'm going to drop all the windows here in a folder. I want to try and get as far as I can with you guys today so we can get to the details next week and we don't skip over anything or two weeks from now. <clears throat> so we got this shell here and I'm going to turn off these windows. So I want to deal with one more thing. So like the, the final car here, <clears throat> the thing that I do want, let's clear, reset this, grab the character <clears throat> is I want to have like a full dash. And I also want to have, <clears throat> excuse me, space for C. I got to have the wheel wells. So we, we have these wheels in place and we want, we basically don't want those wheels to show up on the inside. So we basically need to create the back end of the car where that stuff is going to be covered up. So I'm thinking like, <clears throat> you know, imagining like the space about what you have in the DeLorean, you got this big, like flat back wall, pretty close to you. There's not much of a back seat. So to do that, first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> let's get the subtraction of where the wheel wells are going to go. So I'm going to insert a cylinder. <clears throat> Oh, excuse me. Uh, Sandman Dream, <clears throat> you're saying, I'm just starting to learn and curious what's the best workflow for going from 2D to 3D with a vector and retaining all the detail. Um, <clears throat> well, we can't do vectors in ZBrush. Everything that you're going to bring into ZBrush is going to be pixel based. Um, 2D to 3D, it, here's a good um, resource I'll show you for that. Um, let's go ZBrush for Illustrators. 
I don't, don't think I'm spelling this correctly, but there we go. ZBrush for Illustrators. <clears throat> this page here, we've got some fantastic artists here. So we got Tony Leonard, Mike Thompson, Steve James, J John Mahoney. All these guys are famous for um, doing 2D concept work and then bringing this stuff into the 3D world. Each one of them has a whole series of videos. Um, you know, like Tony Leonard's, for example, is focused on, uh, Tony's an amazing concept artist, but he's also got like, if you look at his 2D line work, his incredible. This whole series is basically, uh, this is a nice promo image he did for us, which is so insanely awesome. But he does a lot of stuff like this. So doing like um, stylized sort of line artwork with 3D and actually converting it to 2D. Um, some of them are going from, you know, that sort of workflow. But there's some great uh, techniques in this process. Um, so I'll paste this here as a, uh, a resource for you. You can let me know if you get that. <clears throat> And um, I would say start with that. That's a good place to go. Um, and if you do have questions, yeah, Steve James is awesome stuff. All those guys are amazing in that group. <clears throat> so, yeah. So let me know if uh, that it kind of gives you an idea if you're to your specific question though i just will mention here with the vectors i assume that you're talking about graphics or images um from going from 2d to 3d with a vector and retaining the detail one thing that you can do is if you go to this is something i've done uh in other streams as well if you go to um let's just cl click and drag a spotlight really fast you can basically bring in if you go to texture import bring in an alpha and that's going to add it into this menu and you select the image and click add to spotlight that's going to drop it into this little scene um, so if basically that's what you would do so let's just take a look here if we just do um pixel logic logo I'll, I'll show you it real fast so we just do pixel logic logo let's grab a nice black and white zbrush save image downloads zbrush all right so this spotlight i'll show you this spotlight here in a second go to texture import grab that from my downloads and then that's going to bring it in here click it click add to spotlight now when you have a black and white image if you go in here and you click intensity oh, if this isn't pure black it's not quite going to work okay let's try this we can go to texture um let's see here i want to do a select this tell it to inverse there we go and let's add this one to spotlight opacity's up let's see if we can make this work it has to be pure black and white which this one doesn't look like it is okay well here we go so clicking and dragging on intensity you get a little clip out all right so any black and white values if you just make this a png that's a whole lot easier um Let's see if we can do that. Pixelogic logo PNG. I'm just curious if that exists on the internet. This one's hopefully that's pure transparent. Let's try that one. Save this to downloads. Let's go back. So texture import. Boom. That puts it here. You click it. Click add to spotlight. Now you get this piece. So with this spotlight tool, Z turns this wheel on and off, which you need the wheel. Shift to Z turns the whole system off. All right, so that's uh, dealing with this. Shift Z is this button. Once everything's on, you press the Z key and you get the wheel. So you click and drag on the image. You can snap to the image center. You can move this here to the middle here, like so. So you can snap to model parts. So basically what you have right now is this object is sitting at the world center. And if you snap this thing to the object, as you go over the object, you get bounding box snapping points, you get central objects. If you click snapshot 3D with this alpha image, it's gonna go through and make a graphic piece from that uh, image. So this is a pretty awesome um, sort of just way to grab images and graphics and turn them into 3D pieces. So you're dealing with two dimensions to three dimensions. Um, there's a pretty good, uh, let's see if we do like snapshot 3D ZBrush. I wonder if this will pop up. I made a video when we released this feature um, way back when 
do ZBrush 2019 release video. Okay, let's go here. So just as a quick little uh, demonstration, you could take multiple images. You can kit bash this stuff together. We'll have to, uh, there's some resources on this stuff in, um, should be, I don't know if we have this in Z classroom right now. So using the 3D vector plugin and things get distorted. Yeah, so 3D vector is going to be more accurate, I think, in terms of the, the vector graphic itself. Um, if it gets distorted, then there's the only thing that you can really do is, um, there we go. Yeah, so here's some cool videos on Snapchat 3D. I, it looks like you already started with it, so I'll, I'll paste these just in case you need them. But um, yeah, the only thing that you can really do if it's distorting it is um, modify the vector itself or the graphic and try and make changes to it. Usually it, ZBrush just takes it as it is. There's not much we can do with editing on the ZBrush side. But if you're really having a problem or an issue, I'd recommend you submit a ticket in support and we can help you a lot more. Um, so I'd say just do that. You can you can reference my name, just say Solomon told me to put a ticket and you can send it to me. And uh, or the, the team will send it to me and I can give you some direct info on that later. But Snapshot 3D would be a good place to start as long as um, you do get a little bit of edge smoothing that has to happen for these shapes to come in. So some things might round out a little bit more. It really depends. But uh, hopefully that helps at least if you can submit a support ticket and we can talk about it then. So back to this piece, I want to just create the wheel well. So let's scale this chunk out. I want to set this to subtract. Let's go to live boolean, turn that on. And then now we can go in, start to get this in place. All right, now the faceting edges, I'm actually going to eventually do this little Boolean uh, piece. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group by normals, which is Control Shift 9. And I'm going to crease poly groups, which is for me Control Shift C or crease poly groups here. Now, when I press the D key to enter dynamic subdivision mode, that'll smooth this thing out. It'll basically get rid of those faceting edges. So dynamic off, you get faceting. Dynamic on smooths that stuff out. So I'm just creating the well there. But what I really need to do is I need to make the internal component to cover up the inside of this car. This will probably be the last thing that I'm going to be able to get done today. Maybe a couple extra trim details. Um, so then, yeah, Sandman, you're welcome. I'm glad that that helps. So this will be the sub. I'm going to duplicate this one. We'll call this add. And this one here, I'm going to take, let's turn off that sub real quick. I'm going to shrink this inside. So I basically want to weld this to the inside of the car. All right. So to do this, um, what I really want to do is I want to be able to see all of how this is touching the inside of that car. And the best way for me to do this is actually go back to, I'm going to go back to the extra body parts. I'm going to grab that outer body shell. This one should have the inner component there. Yeah, so this one still has that inner shell there. So what I'm going to do is isolate that out. Actually, let's make a copy of this piece because I don't want to delete it. I want to keep the original with the shell. Let's rename this one inner shell. And then control shift click on one of these outer groups, control shift A to grow all and then reverse, and now I should get this isolated by itself. Then I'm going to do modify topo, delete hidden. So that inner shell here, I'm going to go duplicate it, and let's bring a copy of it up to the top. So I'm going to leave that available there in the backup. Now I have a copy. So basically what this is going to give me, and let's turn off the outer shell here, the body shell anyways. So we get this piece. What is this right here? Oh, I got something else turned on. Turn those guys off. And then let's turn off those wheels. All right, is that gonna help me or not? I'm curious. 
actually let's just leave this as is and we'll you will maybe be able to use that uh, at some point yeah nerb is saying svg is working in the text palette which um actually sandman just now that nerb has mentioned that to me um i miss i might have misinterpreted what you meant by the 3d vector plugin as the text plugin if that's not what you meant then maybe try the 3d text plugin which is this one you can load a uh, new svg or edit so you can add svgs and make a piece from it if that's not what you're using try that otherwise uh support's going to be the way to go so i'm going to dynamish this piece i want to just turn this into the interior so i'm going to dynamish it go pretty low Let's take this thing. I'm going to do a little bit of clipping. So I just want to make sure that isn't. And actually here, let's do this symmetry. I'm going to grab these ends. Just make sure that those guys go all the way through. Then I'm going to clip and just kind of subtract it. So I want them to collide with the inner wall because eventually I'm basically going to go in here and make this its own piece or maybe weld it to the whole car and we'll see um, so now I'm just kind of going through and clipping out all the extras that I don't want Let's smooth this out redynamish it there we go so we got a nice little panel there um, I don't want this to have that rounded out shape I actually want it to be a nice like straight edge so let's go here let's do I'm gonna first smooth all just to tidy up that shape go in click accept Okay, so that was what you were using, Sandman. Yeah, then um, shoot me something in support. We'll talk about it. I can give you any tips that available if there's an option to work around it. So one thing I'm going to do is I don't want this to have curvature. I want to have just a straight line that goes through. Something for this I like to do is turn on Gizmo, center it to the object, go ahead and click uh, Extender. So Extender, when you click and drag these, it does a little extrusion along these axes. So if I just go in and extend here, it gives me a nice little edge loop. So that edge loop is going to come in handy. All I need to do is get the edge loop. Let's go in and click accept. Now I'm going to solo this out and I'm just going to grab mask pen. Let's mask off this chunk. I'm just going to pull this all the way down. So I get a nice straight line that goes through, right? Now what I want to do is let's uh, clear it, redynamish it. And then turn solo off. I'm going to go just kind of subtract out a chunk. So if you get rid of this excess, make sure I go back to my rectangle. Let's go modify top of delete hidden and then redynamesh. Now this piece is sitting nice inside. And let's just smooth out from the outside. So then to kind of get the next phase here, I want this to kind of shoot up into the ceiling here. Let's go grab like just a little chunk. I'm starting to get a little memory freeze. Something I've noticed is Windows Photo Viewer will sometimes just take too much memory. And also, I came back to Keyshot. I forgot I never showed you guys this. Um, if you just go to glass here, I was basically going through and just intending to show you like you can click and drag to add a transparent material. And as long as this stuff is hollow on the inside, and you get a nice transparent sort of show through. Um, so let's do render pause real time so it doesn't take any resources. And then I'm going to go here, just grab a chunk. So I want this to shoot up into that ceiling. So I'm going to go up like so. And then let's clear, redynamish. I'm redynamishing because I want to do some clean clip cleanup. And if there aren't enough vertex points, basically, if you don't, let's say we go in here from this view, go to clip brush, and I just go in here and I start trying to clip out all this stuff, you get a little bit of a wonkiness happening because there aren't any vertex points here. So ZBrush relies on, for all these features, it's really looking at vertex points for a clean shape. So if I redynamesh it, I get new verts that I can now go in, clip these guys out. And I'll get a nice little step and I can just re dynamesh that. And then all this stuff, I'm just going to kind of smooth out. 
until it goes back in. And that looks pretty good. So then redynamish this. All right, so something we can do now if I wanted to really clean up this piece is I could get a little creative with the, um, the poly groups for this. So we could go in and do, uh, here's a little trick that we could do. Let's just do some quick masking. So we could do masking and poly groups. I'm gonna mask off the edge all the way through. And maybe go back to the mask pen here. Let's just paint in. This is gonna be some more polished by features cleanup. I don't want to fiddle with this too much. I want this to be quick and easy. So press control W. Now I'm going to grab this purple group. Make sure display properties double is on. I'm going to group the bottom. So draw a mask there. I'm going to draw a mask here on the front. Press control W. Draw a mask here on the back. So I get unique groups. <clears throat> this one needs to go with that. So I might just isolate out this part here. So that way I can do a nice group. Okay, so giving those unique groups on these little sections. Now if I take this piece and I just go, actually one more I wanna do is here. There we go. Now let's go deformation, open up that circle, start to polish this thing out. Now I get a nice clean edge result. <coughs> Okay, Andreas, you're not. The, I'm not the only one. I appreciate you validating that. Windows Feeder Photo Viewer goes crazy on you. It it will do that at times. It's only been in the last update. I want to say in the last like month, I noticed it. Maybe a month and a half before the lockdown happened. It will just take up. If you look at it in the Task Manager, it'll take up so much so much of your resources. <clears throat> and ZBrush relies on those things, so you'll start slowing down um, tremendously for a lot of your programs. So anyways, I get this nice little piece that's uh, much, I think much cleaner. And now we can go in. <clears throat> I could take this now and like, this is probably where I would go in, do that same trick to kind of soften up the edges a little. So let's dynamesh it at a 300. <clears throat> I like to do this at higher resolutions because then the smooth all won't destroy as much. Like if you just go back here at 61,000 and you do smooth all, it's going to go really soften up those edges. Maybe that's what you want. In my case, I want to keep those a little bit, but I just want to get rid of the CG perfect edge effect that happens. So remeshing at higher resolutions, closer to a million, yeah, like half a million. Let's go smooth all. Now you can retain more of the edge work <clears throat> and then click accept and you'll get a nice little soft edge. All right, so then from there, if I go in and I do, so that's, you got the, I um, guess we didn't really need that inner shell. Let's delete that. <clears throat> we'll call this back seat part. I don't really know what to call that. Um, and then if you turn on the wheel sub, now what will happen here is the wheel sub is going to be subtracting from everything above it. So it's subtracting from the entire shell of this car, and it's also subtracting from this back piece too. Now, in that in this case, that doesn't really work here because you see like it's basically colliding with, like if you just turn off the car, that wheel well is colliding with this here and subtracting these parts. I don't want it to do that. So if I were to go through and seal up this piece with the shell, um, this is where this stuff gets a little better. So as long as these edges from this back piece are completely colliding with, like it looks like that's not quite colliding with this edge. Now, this is something that you probably can't see. Um, I'm using Matte Cat Pearl. In my custom UI, I always keep these sketch shade materials. These ones, when you turn them on, they highlight edge visibility. These are basically all these sketch materials here. Sometimes the matte cap gray shade, you got too much shadow and you can't see what's going on. So the sketch shade is actually a pretty good one. And I can go in here and I can see, I want this edge to be completely pushed through this shell for this next part to work. 
essentially what we're going to do is we're going to dynamesh this with or weld this with you don't even have to dynamesh you could boolean it if you want this with the shell so that way when the wheel weld boolean goes through it will not do any colliding all right so this thing is okay sure let's auto save <clears throat> Chummo. It's 1.30. Got a little bit more time. Okay, so that thing's now perfectly through. Oh, no, it's not. I missed a part. Oh, and I wasn't doing symmetry. That's why. So this thing's not symmetrical right now. So floor grid. Let's do my hotkey for this. Mirror and weld is control shift W. So now if I mirror and weld that, should be through. Okay, that's great. So let's do a little boolean process um oh let me load my spotlight real quick okay subtool now i want to combine these two so i want to make these one closed shell so this is going to help with this that boolean process for the wheel well so i'm going to go to to basically i can turn everything off in this case i just want to combine these two with live booleans on we can go do a Boolean, make Boolean mesh. I'm not using dynamic subdivisions for any of these parts. And now we'll get this complete shell. All right, so this piece now, because it's closed, as long as those surfaces are welded, you're gonna get triangles that weld and close the shell. So basically when I go in here now, this whole back piece no longer has, if you turn on display properties double. Oh, it looks like I might not have had should its intention is to delete any extra geo that's not touching any surface so if this thing isn't welded completely hmm let me just try this one more time just want to go in and check these edges That looks to be fine. Like what we shouldn't see here is you'll see we do have the back panel of this piece, and I don't want that. I want to delete that extra geo. So Liboolean's is intended to go through and remove that stuff completely as long as it's not uh, breaking out of this exterior shell. So let's go back and take a look at this piece. I need to make sure that it's not touching any of these components. Might just turn on gizmo here. Let's alt click, reset to center, just scale it out and up. And then let's just make sure, I'm gonna go with H polish here. Just polish this back in. Make sure I have symmetry on for that. Okay, let's try this one more time. So I'm gonna delete this one. Go back to my Boolean, make Boolean mesh. Now let's check that again. Wow, that inner shell is just still working. Let's grab this. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So here's a little trick that we can do. So this piece, that little, the extras of the back of this seat here, hopefully you can understand what's happening. So I wanna get rid of basically all this excess stuff in the back. I just want this wall to weld with the front of here and then leave the, the shell in the back of this to be completely um, empty. So basically what I don't want is to have this piece sitting in there. So the Boolean process, when these surfaces meet, it should be welding this and it should be deleting any of the extras. In some way, shape or form, this piece is probably um, somehow like touching the back of this panel here. Hopefully this makes sense. The back of this panel is probably touching somewhere inside of the, 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 the shell of this car, which it looks like actually I can see it right there. In transparency, you see how that piece is actually touching it. All right, so actually let's try a little trick here so we can see what happens. I'll show you what we can do with this piece first though. So if you go in here, you grab just one of these polygrip borders and you do 
visibility grow all. It's going to grow out to all the vertex points that are shared connected to this shell, right? So if those other parts in the back of this piece are somehow disconnected, they're going to create their own shells. If you control shift drag, you're going to see that it actually isolates out this new shell. So this new piece here, we can literally just reverse it, go to modify top out, delete hidden. So we're getting rid of that shell. And if you go take a look at here in the back now, basically we just have this piece colliding with the front here. So you see how it's running into the windows and all those parts that I made sure it touched. And then the rest is just an empty shell, which should be perfect. That's going to help us with the Boolean process. Now, going back to, to make this work in the Boolean process right away, because this is probably touching somewhere, I assume that it's touching um, these wall borders here. It's basically traveling through the inner shell. It's somewhere intersected, right? So it can't touch anything. It needs to be floating in space. So to do that, I'm going to go back to this piece here and I just want to go in here and let's just do a mask over this whole back chunk here. So I want to protect the front as much as possible inverse. I'm going to take this thing and do smooth all a lot. I'm going to just crank up that smooth. Click accept, maybe go do it one more time. And then let's go in and click accept. And you could even go in with gizmo and maybe let's just like shrink this thing back so it's not touching anything. Really don't care about what happens to it. I'm just curious to see if this will help. So now when you turn on polyframe, oops, looks like I see that wall is connected, but let's try it. So go subtool, Boolean, make Boolean mesh. Um, and then let's go let's see, which is this one? Shell, shell one is the one we want. Grab this guy. Uh, Mahirch, you have a question. Let me, um, check that here in a second. So that's still got it. All right. So that's still somewhere in there. It's touching, but you can follow that workflow and eventually you should be able to completely disconnect that. Um, it just can't touch anywhere in that shape. So let's try grab all grow all inverse. And I basically get this new shell that's combining with the inner shell and the outer. So we could reverse that and just delete hidden again, and you should get that same result. Hopefully that makes sense. What's happening. If you've ever like done any kind of bullions, it's welding those surfaces and basically separating geometry from other pieces uh, that where it can. So if these things weren't touching, I wouldn't have to go through this process at all. But in this case, I was able to clean it up. So now I'm going to go back into the car. Let's do insert. This will be body shell two. Get rid of that one. Now what we'll have, get rid of that extra. And we don't need the back seat part anymore either. I'm going to keep that in misc extras down here. Yeah. So that way I'll always have a backup of it. But long story short, the reason why I wanted to do that was mainly because I want this wheel well to cut through perfectly and not have anything it's running into. So by doing all those steps there, that one main step, if I turn on the wheel well subtool, now when it travels through, oh, it's almost there. It's just colliding with this piece. So let's go, probably need to adjust those wheels. Take this thing, maybe go a little bit more in till we don't have any collision. That looks good. And the back wheels are just simply going to have to be a little bit smaller. So a little trick, all the the back wheels, let's see, do I have all the wheels in? Yeah, I do actually. So I can't do transpose all. If you wanted to do everything within a folder, you can go into do transpose set, which um, let's clear that. If I go here and do transpose set, that should give me all the wheels, but then I can go say deselect those put this here in the center. But in this case, what I'd rather do is center the gizmo with the, um, the center of this piece, turn on transpose all and just manually control shift click to grab these polygroups. Now what I can do is scale this down. So I got a little bit of space there and clear it. There we go. So now we got a nice clean wheel well shelled out. Um, we can go in and turn on the front wheel legs. Those are at least in a good place. Probably gonna have to shrink those pieces back. 
Let's grab these edges. That's all looking good. And then we can turn on the windows. Those look nice. And now we got at least the complete shell done. Now, everything else that I want to do is going to be external additional paneling. Um, I'm going to have to save that for the next stream because it'll just get into a whole new set of features and we can leave this as is. So this would be a good place now where I want to get into in the next stream. Hopefully you guys are <clears throat> down to tune into that one. Uh, I want to go into some more, some, some more advanced features in detailing, uh, getting into more of the technical stuff like, for example, uh, tricks and things that we can do to start getting, again, bringing this back up, getting techie kind of details in those surfaces, nice clean grooves and cut lines. I want to get into all that. Uh, kind of looking at this reference here, I like the, um, again, that George Hall reference. Bring this back in. So he has a couple. I like this. The white one kind of shows off the lines, but these little cuts and grooves. So if we go in with a little... Basically, this stuff here kind of going through. We get these extra panel kind of details, this kind of stuff. Basically, all of this, uh, these components. I like a lot of this stuff here. Even stuff like these extra little pieces, like all these parts, I want to try and hit all of those next week or in two weeks, basically. And even I like this stuff too. So they like these extra little window details, uh, getting into the weapons, those secondary sort of like final details I think are going to be great and then we'll also talk about doing all this interior stuff too um, depending on how much time I'll have maybe I'll have to break it up into four streams to complete the whole thing but uh, this will be the plan so from here we got a good at least a good base something to build on and then I can go through and start finaling, finalizing all these <coughs> great details um, so the um uh, sorry, I had to get back to the, oh yeah, Brian B, you're asking for the config setup? Yes, absolutely. Um, what I'll do is, you just take my word for it, or if you can trust me here, you know what would be great is, if you go to ZBC, here's how I'll do it. I haven't uploaded it yet. Go to my ZBC page. What I'm going to do for this stream, like I did here for the Mandalorian, is make a whole topic for this thing. So if you go to, um, let me just go to my ZBC page. <clears throat> if you don't have an account, make one. You can follow me here, Solomon underscore Blair. And I will make a post with this stuff here, and I will paste the custom UI, the hotkeys, um, and even the colors if you if you want them. You know, the colors are, I keep my stuff, I try to keep it as limited as possible in the view. Uh, I also have this, the two key maps to my like I like to basically I just use modified topology the most. So anytime I want modified topo stuff, I just click to and I get my delete hiddens, my weld points, close holes, that kind of stuff. But I'll post it there if that's okay with you. And um, you can send me, um, you know, once I post that thread, you can, and you can even follow me here on Instagram too. Uh, if you want to send me direct messages to remind me, if you don't see it, I'll do it as soon as I'm done with the stream right now for anybody who's interested in that. And, um, my hertz is there a way to disable the sensitivity pressure for the clay tubes when I sculpt start from zero to the pen pressure gradually for a certain height I can start with exponent 100 like okay so let's just take a look at that I'll use this last 10 minutes or so to help you guys with questions um, clay tubes there shouldn't be sensitivity for that. Like the clay tubes is essentially a, is a single layer. I guess maybe what you mean is like that tapering when you do slow pressure, pressure sensitivity to more, it's a smaller stroke and then it goes bigger. Um, I don't know if that's what you mean, but by default clay tubes, when you draw it only draws a single layer. So the pressure sensitivity is only going to affect the tapering of that brush. Yeah. So that start of the stroke, I guess is what you're trying to get rid of. Um, so if I go small, then it kind of goes small to big. Um, let me see. What you could probably do is just like what I do with the, the mask brush. For clay tubes, go to brush, go to tablet pressure, and use global settings. This way, I think it should do 
a clean, straight stroke. Tell me if that does it. This would be your, your best option for specific brushes. Um, if, the, if you have a global or custom tablet pressure settings with Wacom, for example, um, you can go in here, you can change like the Z intensity curve. Uh, maybe instead of it being a sloped, if you reset that, or let's do, um, let's try this. Instead of doing global, if tell me if global settings works for you. Okay, it looks like it did, but if it didn't, uh, you could level out this Z intensity curve. So you get a straight projection. And that should, let's see, if we go small to big, eh, it's still going to do it. There probably be a way to go through and customize this in the size, or let's close this. Uh, with that Z intensity, potentially. But global settings should just take care of that for you. Um, anyways, looks like that helped you, so we'll call that one uh, completed. Just going to go back and check real quick. If you guys have any last-minute questions before I cut this thing off, I don't know, what do you guys think? Does this look okay? Any suggestions or thoughts on this? I probably should round out the front. Um, the version I made before this, let's go load. This will be the, I guess, first passed version, first pass. I kind of like the rounded out curves here. I kept some more like beveled edges in here. So you get a little bit more sharpness. <clears throat> that between this, this one's a little bit more boxy. Yeah, Turge, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching the whole stream. Everybody who's been staying through, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, I guess we'll we'll call it we'll call it a day. Doesn't look like you guys have any more questions. So shoot me a follow Instagram. I'll follow all you guys. We can communicate there directly. Uh, don't forget about ZBC if you guys aren't members. Um, shoot me a follow. I'll follow you guys back. We can communicate that way. And for Brian, anybody else who wants my custom UI, I'm going to make a post. I'll put it here on my account. And if uh, if you don't see it there, next stream, I'll make sure to uh, upload it to you guys in the chat. Oh, yeah. You're in Malaysia, of course. At 5 a.m., you're insane. That's amazing. Well, thanks for spending your whole night with me. Um, <laughs> nice. Get some sleep. Uh, side effects, uh, you're welcome, man. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Appreciate all your witty commentary. Um, minor seven. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, that's it for me. You guys, I'll call it this time. I'll be on again, uh, next Thursday at the 23rd, but I will be doing the, uh, ZBrush core stream. So, um, this guy here is what I'll be working on in that stream. And, uh, I'll be back in two weeks for this one. All right. So not next Thursday, but the following, and, uh, you can check out that schedule on ZBC or ZBrush live. All right, everybody. Yeah. Uh, you skip. I'm glad you learned. That's really great to hear. Uh, I'll try and keep that up for the next one. Yeah. Be safe, everyone. And I'll see you next week. All right. Cheers.